first Saturday in November, a football weekend at Notre Dame. And while the trees have lost most of their autumn glow, the colors of fall remain on the field. The green and gold of Notre Dame. Joined today by the orange of Tennessee. Different colors and different aspirations today. The Irish hoping to salvage a disappointing season. While the Volunteers rank seventh in the nation, very much alive in the national championship picture. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Notre Dame Stadium. Tom Hammond and Pat Hayden. The Vols come in having lost only once this season, and they can score points in a variety of ways. A potent passing game led by quarterback Casey Clawson, some talented receivers, but they also have one of the best running backs in America. Yeah, Tom, don't be deluded by all the firepower they have out there, the wide receiver position, because this is still fundamentally a running football team, and why not when you have Travis Stevens to whom you can give the ball. He averages 30 carries a game more than anybody in the country, 145 yards a game, third in the country. And Tom, I think in the fourth quarter, he is particularly good. This is where Tennessee wears people down, and particularly Travis Stevens does. But Pat, today's game might hinge on strength against strength, the Notre Dame rushing attack versus Tennessee's run defense. Well, first of all, Notre Dame has finally found a style. They are a running football team, primarily led by the running quarterback, Carlisle Holiday. You'll see a lot of options and quarterback draws today. That's how they make their big plays. Paul Tats against University of Tennessee's defense, and particularly John Henderson, a guy who won the Outland Trophy a year ago, playing with a you know banged up ankle, but not at full strength, but still anchors that defensive line. They're tenth in the country, but you have an improving Notre Dame running team against a defense that's designed to stop the run. All right, the Tennessee Volunteers, the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Smokey is here. He made the trip up from Knoxville today, and a lot of orange-clad fans. We're back for the opening kickoff after this from your local NBC station from Notre Dame Stadium and uh, Lewis Johnson joining us on the sidelines today. Let's check in with him now. Lewis? All right, John. Thanks so much here with Notre Dame coach Bob Davey and coach uh, really an up and down season. Three tough losses early on. You come back with three big wins and then the disappointing loss to Boston College last week. What have you been saying to the team throughout the week and even before the game today? Well, I told them sometimes the best quality you can have as a player or a coach is a short memory. So don't think about what's happened in the past. Think about the opportunity we have from this point forward. Three of the four teams we left out on our schedule in the top 13 in the BCS poll, starting with number seven, Tennessee today. So we got a lot of good things left ahead of, ahead of us if we can play as good as we're capable of. Bob, thanks and good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Lewis, and there's Philip Palmer, the Tennessee head coach. In fact, he's the winningest active coach in Division 1A football in America. Now in his 10th season as the head coach of the balls. It is a gorgeous afternoon for November in South Bend, Indiana. 63 degrees, a lot of bright sunshine, only 5 to 10 miles an hour on the wind. The ball band is here, Smokey's here, a lot of orange-clad fans at Notre Dame Stadium as the seventh-ranked Volunteers win the toss. They defer to the second half. Notre Dame will get the ball first. Julius Jones awaits the kickoff by Alex Walls. foot to leather and a short kick it'll be taken by Jones Julius Jones looks for a block on the corner can't get away an open field tackle beautifully done by Rashad Baker 11 yards on the return Baker was the only man and he did his job as walls with the kickoff and Tennessee will play defense let's take a look at our starting lineups courtesy of Adidas Notre Dame uh, starting lineup has been scrambled a bit with the injury to Sean Milligan. They changed position, so Ballers, Black, Thane, Mahan, and Curtin. Quarterback Carlisle Holiday banged up a bit against Boston College a week ago. Back in the lineup, so is Tony Fisher. He missed last week's game. Lipinski, Gibbons, fighting off the flu, Hunter, and Owens. First down from the Irish 17. From the shotgun formation. Carlisle Holiday with a little shovel pass to Gibbons. And David Gibbons gets about three yards to the 20, where Baker again makes the Tennessee tackle. Here's the volunteer defense up front. This is about as good as it gets in college football, including John Henderson, the Outland Trophy winner a year ago, who's been fighting off a high ankle sprain. And Will Overstreet returns to the lineup after missing a couple due to injury. Moore, Stevenson, Whiteside, Lott, Greer, Baker, and Battle are in the secondary. Second down.
And the handoff again is to David Gibbons, lining up at a running back spot that time. Eddie Moore makes the tackle for the Volunteers. It'll bring up a third down for Notre Dame. And, and Tom, we talked about a little bit about Tennessee's defense at the top. This is a defense that is good enough to make Notre Dame throw the ball to win. And that's what Notre Dame doesn't want to do, to be perfectly honest. This is a team I don't think you can be one-dimensional against. You must be able to get some plays in the passing game. And for Notre Dame, the quarterback draws is part of that passing game for them, really. Arnez battle in at a wide receiver spot, and a flag immediately goes down. This is the Southeastern Conference officiating crew today. Substitution infraction on the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Steve Shaw, an Alabama grad, is the referee and the five-yard step-off against the Irish. Battle came onto the field late, and that was 12 men on the field in the huddle, and so that's the infraction. So now it's third down and eight. Carlisle Holiday's first pass of the game. Downfield, he's got a man open, Javen Hunter, but the pass off target. Hunter had gotten beyond the secondary, covered by Greer, but the pass off target, and Notre Dame will punt. Yeah, th those are freebies, Tom. Those are the ones you have to capitalize, and those are the kind of big plays they have not had in the passing game. Yes, they've had them in the running game. A wide open, an absolutely wide open on the quarter route by Hunter, and then this is the guy you have to worry about all day long, John Henderson, number 98. He mentioned the ankle sprain. 18 sacks in his career. One of those guys can really push from inside. Joey Hillbold's punt to Rashad Baker. Baker. Tries to cut to the sideline. Good special teams coverage by Notre Dame. They stop him at the Tennessee 49. Six-yard return, but the punt only covered 37 yards. Now the Volunteers will have the ball for the first time. Yeah, great field position, too. They'll start just shy of the midfield stripe with Coleman, Weary, Wells, Herrera, and often Hazel up front. And Casey Clawson needs only 147 yards passing for 3,000 in his career. Bartholomew, the blocking fullback, Stevens, leads the nation in carry. This is a good offensive line, Tom. Really good offensive line. Clawson on first down, retreats to pass, sends it down the sideline, incomplete. The pass intended for Washington, broken up by Shane Walton. Kelly Washington, number 15, has uh, been a sensation in his first year at Tennessee. Here's the Irish defense with Weaver, Campbell, Hilliard, and Roberts up front. The linebackers, Boyman, Harrison, who's now the leading tackler, Watson second, with Walton, Duff, Earl, and Sapp in the secondary. Second and ten. Tennessee's first possession starting almost at midfield. Stevens, first carry of the day. Shook one tackler, but not the second. Got about three yards on his initial carry. Jerome Sapp the man that hit him first and slowed him down. It, you know, Travis Stevens, we said he, he leads the nation in carries with 30. And you'll see some runs like this slip a little bit, you know, three-yard carries, but he can, you know, get those extra two or three yards after hit. He'll have some threes, he'll have some tens, and he'll have some 30- and 40-yard runs. But they keep feeding the ball to him, and with that patience, he wears people down. Here they'll go with a four-wide receiver set. The Irish respond with their nickel defense. Six defensive backs, actually a dime defense. Lawson from the shotgun on third down. Now he's going to scramble out of the pocket, and he'll be stopped. Got back almost to the line of scrimmage before Cario Harrison made the tackle. And a little help from the umpire as well. That's Butch Lambert. Yeah. And, you know, Harrison, number uh, 51, is actually a middle linebacker, but actually lined up as a defensive end. And yeah, you're in, indeed that uh, the umpire, Butch Lambert, he uh, tackled a couple of weeks ago, Travis Stevens. Seth Reagan is on to punt. It'll be only his second punt of the season. He had a pooch punt a week ago against South Carolina, taken by Julius Jones, and not much on the return. 34-yard punt, four yards on the return. Stacy made the tackle. We're scoreless, one possession apiece. Back to Notre Dame Stadium in a moment. Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson at Notre Dame Stadium, and Lewis has a special guest. Quite a special guest, Tom. Lewis Johnson down the sideline with Hall of Fame coach and head manager, I'm sorry, Tommy Lasorda. And coach, Bob Davey was there in Los Angeles visiting with you early in the summer, and you told him that whenever he needed a speaker, 
you would come and talk to the team. You were here this week. What did you say to these guys who've been sort of dealing with some difficulty? Well, I told them what it's going to take for them to win this game. They have to play up to their capabilities. you got to start playing for the name on the front of the shirt and not for the name on the back of your shirt. If you can do that, you can beat this team. It seems as though the players have responded to you throughout the week. I saw you even talking to some of the recruits. What do you say to them? Well, you know what's amazing about it and what made me feel good it's last night at the pep rally when I spoke. Every one of those football players came up and gave me a hug and thanked me. So that really made me feel good. You know, uh, uh, Paul Maneri, the baseball coach here at uni uh, the University of Notre Dame, is a good friend of mine, and I spent a lot of time with him here today. But when Coach Davey and uh, Kevin White, the athletic rep, Jim Phillips, they, they said that they would be okay. They wanted me to come over here and talk to the team. All right, good to see you. Love to talk baseball, but we're going to stick with football today. Good, good, good. Okay. All right, Tom, back up to you. All right, Lewis, as uh, Tony Fisher gets a, an Irish first down, initial first down of the game for either team. Stevenson with the uh, tackle for the Volunteers. Tom in the sort of the manager, not only of the Dodgers for all those years, but of the yeah. U.S. Olympic team that won the gold medal in Sydney. Has he ever let anybody walk by without hugging him, not Tommy? Yeah. <laughs> I think he hugged the whole team, yeah. First down, Irish at their own 29-yard line. Tennessee and Notre Dame scoreless in the first quarter. From the gun, Holiday finds Hunter. Javen Hunter across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Yeah, Javen Hunter, you know, in the passing game, that's his 32nd catch of the year. And, you know, it, when they've had it, you'll, you'll see big cushion for Javen Hunter, but this is a guy that, you know, turns his body, get, catches a lot of hook routes. I'd love to see him catch the ball sometime on uh, Tom on the move where he can run away from a defender, you know, in the yards after catch, but it seems like his Notre Dame receivers catch the ball and are tackled immediately. That one covered eight yards as Jabari Greer slipped a bit before he recovered to make the tackle. From the wishbone looking backfield, Holiday in trouble, and he unloads it. And a smart play. That's not, he was outside the tackle, so that's not intentional grounding. Jackson was bearing down on him in a hurry, flushed him out of the pocket, and then Holiday just threw it away. You know, inside, Tennessee has great, two great run stoppers in Henderson and Hainsworth. And then on the outside with Jackson and Will Overstreet, you have some guys that really can come off the corner. So, you know, it's really tough to, against these guys running the ball inside, and then when you try to throw it or roll the ball out, you got very, two very active defensive ends. So far, they've effectively limited Holiday's running, two carries for a total of... Uh, Four yards. Or excuse me, he's two or four through the air, I believe, my fault. Four wides, Hunter, Gibbons, Battle, and Jenkins in this formation. Holiday stands in the pocket, and that'll be an incomplete pass. Through the hands of Arnez Battle. Battle, the former quarterback, entered earlier in the season, returned to play against Boston College last week, but dropped that one after uh, missing four games before his return against the Eagles. Yeah, and the Irish were hoping that uh, Arnez Battle be able to make these kind of catches and do something with it after the after the catch. He was past the first down marker, but still making the adjustment as a wide receiver. So Hillbold is ready for his second punt with Baker deep. This one only covered 37. Baker retreats to his 15 yard line and is spun down at about the 21. Good special teams coverage again. This time Courtney Watson for the Irish. Seven-yard return after the punt covered 48. Back to Notre Dame Stadium in just a moment. Seventh-ranked Tennessee and Notre Dame scoreless in the first quarter. The ball's second possession coming up. This one from their own 21-yard line. And the Irish come out in a nickel defense. Clifford Jefferson joins the starters. Graham in motion and stops as Fawson hands to Stevens, and he's buried at the line of scrimmage. Courtney, forward for a yard or so. And Courtney Watson, number 33 for the Irish, really stuffed that play. Now, that's not his fourth. I mean, he is, a, he is kind of a chaser type of linebacker, inside, you know, wheel linebacker, they call him. Usually kind of the guys that run plays down from behind. That time he took the fullback on and then made the, made the, uh, made the play. So a forceful play there by Watson. Second down and eight. Irish show blitz. Watson comes on the blitz. Stevens is to the 26-yard line. Tario Harrison latched on to him. And it'll be a third down for the Volunteers. 
it looked like he was going to slip there through there for a big old gain until Tario Harrison, number 51, kind of made the play. The guy that, as you mentioned, is their leading tackler now, has really come on the last few weeks. The guy we talked to him a couple weeks ago and said, you kind of look like Dick Butkus wearing that number 51. <laughs> Didn't even know who Dick Butkus was. Yeah, but he is a Dean List student, and after we talked to him, we were convinced he'll be somebody's CEO someday. Yeah, yeah, He's got a big, big future. The senior from Sulphur Springs, Texas. Third and five. Lawson has his man. It's the tight end, Witten, and Witten bangs his way to the 40-yard line. Harrison hit him and bounced off, and Witten had a first down, a gain of 12. Yeah, a new weapon for the Volunteers, and, and that is the tight end. The tight end positions have caught now 21 passes for Tennessee this year. And, and the amazing thing is over the last four years, they've only caught 17 passes over the entire past four years, so this is a new weapon. You add that to the great wide receivers you add that to Travis Stevens and this is an offense that's not only getting healthy but awfully dy dynamic. Witten the former defensive end who was reluctant to make the switch and he's become a real weapon. Stevens spinning and ripping off about seven yards Jerome Sapp finally got him down. Yeah, there's one of those runs that should have been what three yard gain perhaps but the spin picked up another four or five. He's carried four times now for 17 yards. For some backs, you know, the kind of the yards after contact are critical. He's going to get hit right there, the spin move. Harrison misses him, number 51. They kind of run through another four yards after the initial hit. Second down and three. Finlayson in motion, and the left tackle moved prematurely, Reggie Coleman. You know, it was unanimous on the left side. I think Witten kind of moved with him. So a five-yard step off, the first penalty against Tennessee. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Log on to NBCSports.com and click on a special section, NBC's Notre Dame Central, for in-depth coverage of the Irish. Check out expert analysis by pass mm -hmm. and previews of upcoming Irish opponents, plus after the game, video highlights and audio interviews with Coach Davey and key Irish players at NBCSports.com. Clawson with a short drop, wings it down the sideline, incomplete. Too far for Stallworth to catch up to as Vontez Duff was defending against the sideline. Kind of a low percentage pass play, but they have such confidence, I, I think, in these wide receivers, Stallworth, Washington, Parker, that they take some chances. You know, sometimes you view them as a very conservative team because they run the ball so much, but they will take some aggressive chances in the passing game. Gaudy numbers, you see, for Clawson through the air this season. And as we said, closing in on 3,000 for his career. Dime defense, six defensive backs for the Irish on third and eight. Pawson's in the shotgun. Pawson with plenty of time across the middle, complete. Pass caught by Stallworth, still on his feet, and fumbled the football. Let's see who it recovered. Notre Dame. Notre Dame's got it. 28-yard gain, and then Stallworth lost the ball, and the Irish recovered. Well, I, I was watching Fred Weary, the left guard first, who did a great job of setting up the play. Gave Clawson plenty of time to find Stallworth. And, and this is just, as a quarterback, exactly what you want. Get that those wide receivers out in front on the move to run with it, the ball, the catch, run with the ball after the catch. And Hustling, who's that? Clifford Jefferson? Clifford Jefferson, yeah. 15, the man that got a hand in there to knock it uh, free, and Stallworth was already juggling, looks like having trouble holding on, and really? Jefferson knocked it loose. He is wearing a cast. Uh, he broke his wrist a few few weeks ago. First down carry by Julius Jones, tried to cut it back. He gained about five yards on first down before he's tackled by Dominique Stevenson. You see that soft cast on his left hand, broke his wrist. It was in his right hand, really. Yeah, then the hustling Jefferson. This is what Notre Dame has actually done a pretty good job on. I remember a couple of weeks ago against USC, there was a look like a USC receiver was going to score, but a hustling defensive end, Ryan Roberts, stopped him at the one yard line, ultimately forced a field goal. Jason Murray and at fullback in front of Julius Jones at tailback. Three wide. Option. Holiday with a pitch. Julius Jones will be stopped short of the first down by Rashad Baker as Tennessee plays the option well. Notre Dame to win this game. They cannot turn the ball over, I believe, more than one time themselves. They have to create some turnovers, which they just did. And they're going to have to manufacture 
some sort of passing game. I just don't think you can be one-dimensional against this very, very good Tennessee defense. The past few weeks, Tom, we've seen they've manufactured those big plays in the option game. Third down and three. Julius Jones, the lone setback. Holiday hands to Jones. And Jones has a first down. Breaking over tacklers, falling forward to the 47. A 10-yard gain on third down. Rashad Baker just tripped him up, and Jones had some room that time. You know, offensive linemen in different positions other, other than the center. Jeff Bain's the only guy playing the same position this week. Good blocks in here on that right side by Mahan in particular. And then Julius Jones kind of hugged Mahan's block and picks up the first. Three carries, 17 yards for Jones. First down from the Irish 46. Scoreless first quarter, six minutes left. On the shotgun. Holiday fakes the handoff, keeps it, cuts to the outside. Holiday upended at the 45-yard line. Kurt Bowler is leading the way with a good block as Locke finally made the stop of the Tennessee quarterback. You know, we're just talking about manufacturing kind of plays. This is one of them. Designed quarterback counter, if you will. Again, they, they call him a quarterback. I think he's more like, uh, you know, a single wing tailback, General Nealon. He could play for <laughs> he General Nealon. He would like him, wouldn't he? He'd love him. General Robert Nealon, of course, the longtime Tennessee coach for whom the stadium is named and a proponent of the single wing. Here's the handoff to Givens, who lined up in the backfield. Smacked down for no gain on second and one. Whiteside met him right at the hole. You know, when you see Tennessee linebackers make a lot of plays, and again, the reason for that is that those front four defensive linemen are just so big and powerful. Henderson, Hazel, Overstreet, Jackson, those guys kind of suck up a lot of bodies. Even if, even if you block them, it means linebackers are running free. Third down, and now two. A two tight end formation, Jones and Murray. And in motion, Gibbons. Here's the option. Holiday ducks under, twisted down, but he has a first down. Overstreet had him, but he's able to fall forward a yard past the marker, and the Notre Dame drive continues, and this is what Bob Davey would like to see, a little ball control from his offense. Absolutely. You know, this is one of their design, you know, option plays. He doesn't see it. He's going to keep it very quickly. He knew, he knew exactly he just needed two yards to pick up that first down. So, a you know, a good call, disciplined run by Carl Holiday. One of the things that uh, we've noticed, though, he has not protected the ball partic particularly well. Three turnovers against uh, USC a few weeks ago. Here's battle in motion. Option. And then Holiday back to pass. Plenty of time. Pass complete to the tight end, Owens. John Owens breaks one tackle. And then is knocked down at the 24-yard line by Greer. 19-yard gain. Welcome to the season, the tight ends. Owens caught a touchdown <laughs> pass against BC. You know, and a real nice call by Kevin Rogers, the offensive coordinator. You have option, 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 and you come back right back with an option pass. He actually had three guys open. He had uh, both tight ends. Uh, Gary Godsey was open uh, downfield as well. Spot the ball at the Tennessee 24-yard line. First down, Notre Dame. Clock under four minutes to play first quarter. The seventh-ranked Volunteers and the Irish are scoreless. Rodimer makes an appearance at a wide receiver to the top of the formation. Wishbone backfield. David Gibbons. Well, they're going a little rough today. Picks his way forward for about three, four yards. Got to the just short of the 20 yard line. And a Moore and Jackson combining on the stop as you check some other scores from around this college football as we move into November and the stretch run of the college football season. You think it would be 60 degrees in South Bend in November? Boy, you could have had my house on that one. Oh boy, you better put that shirt back on. I know it's warm, <laughs> Tom, but... Ninth play of the Notre Dame drive. Second down and six from the Volunteer 20. From the shotgun, Carlisle Holiday. Jones next to him. Now he's going to step up under center. Well, Fane didn't want to still deep snap it with a nose tackle right in his face. Option play. Oh. Bad oh. toss. It'll go out of bounds. Yeah, started with a bad decision. That, that's one you just have to, you know, accept the loss. It was Kevin Burnett, number two, who John uh, Chavis, the defensive coordinator, thought this guy, Burnett, number two, is going to have a very big career. This one, you just go down. Right there. You just take, take the three-yard loss 
and uh, prevent a potential turnover. Spot the ball where it went out of bounds, and that is the 29-yard line. It sets up a third down and 15. And I think if Cardo Holliday, you have to realize the, the you know the situation of the game. You have a field goal kicker is awfully good. You can't avoid, you know, take the sack. Dime defense for the ball. Six defensive backs. Battle in motion. Holiday. And he'll be sacked. It was Hainsworth. That front of Tennessee. So powerful. Albert Hainsworth. See, that, that's one I think you have to find a way to get rid of, Tom. I, I know Hainsworth got in there pretty quickly. But you, you just need, there he is. He's kind of battling through Mahan and Brennan. And, you know, really took them out of field goal range. Loss of eight. You know, punt it now. I think, you know, part of becoming a quarterback is that process we talked about. Is making ball decisions. Ball get rid of the ball when you have to. Bill Bold will try to pooch punt it. They're down it deep. Good coverage for the Irish. They have men there, and they will down it at the one-foot line. Textbook, 35 yards down at the one by the Irish. It was Terrence Howard waiting on the football, down it at the one, and the Irish have the balls backed up. On NBC. The Irish and the Volunteers and a good one. Scored his first quarter, two minutes left. Tennessee takes over at its own one-yard line. Lawson with a keep, about a yard or two. And, of course, uh, a big day here at NBC because coming up next will be Michael Jordan with his uh, home debut as a Washington Wizard as they host the 76ers. Michael Jordan, his third game as a Wizard, his home debut. That's coming up next here on NBC. And... I bet Anthony Weaver of Notre Dame will be showering quick, getting back to his TV set. He grew up in Saratoga Springs, New York, as a basketball Michael Jordan fan. He had Jordan all over his room. He wasn't the only youngster that had, <laughs> had those up in his room. Stevens looking for a steam, can find none. A big, big down now for Tennessee. You know, ordinarily Notre Dame, you would think it's a pretty tough place to play, Tom. But think of, you know, the SEC, you, you know how tough it is right. to play. And the, the road games that Tennessee plays, they've already played uh, at Arkansas and Alabama. Later on in the year, they go to Florida. Whereas some teams might get intimidated by an environment like this. You just sense Tennessee will not. They play them every week. Third down and eight. The ball spotted at the Tennessee three-yard line. Just across the three for Casey Clawson. Clawson retreats to the end zone to pass. Completes the pass to Witten. The tight end met for the Irish defenders, but he has a first down. Huge play by Clawson and Witten, who was wide open, and Tennessee advances the ball from the shadow of their own goal. Clifford Jefferson stopped Big Witten, all 265 pounds of him. You, you know, Tom, that's not a, a touchdown, obviously, but this is one of the key plays in the game, certainly, I think. Certainly, definitely this far. And great call by Randy Sanders, and then a good read by Clawson. You get those big, wide, powerful wide receivers. They played what they call double zone. They double those guys. It leaves your tight end with a one-on-one -on -one coverage. He found him. Good read. First down balls from the 13. Inside the final 30 seconds, and there's a flag down before the play can develop. I thought it was Mr. Witten just kind of moving just a pinch early. As we said, this is a Southeastern Conference officiating crew. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, that's Steve Shaw. You mentioned he went to Alabama. He's not allowed to ref, uh, officiate in the Alabama games, but played golf at Alabama. Working on a, a hook, he told me, for the game. <laughs> Broken the ball a little I didn't much. think guys that were good enough to play in college <laughs> had hooks. Yeah, he does. Bill Fulmer's volunteers now at first and 15. A single coverage up here, boy. <laughs> But they hand to Stevens. Stevens with a cutback run, carrying tacklers with him across the 15-yard line. Harrison and Walton combined for the tackle as the first quarter comes to a close. That's the end of a scoreless first quarter. Back to Notre Dame after these messages from your local NBC station. Quarters, the Notre Dame football team was presented with the American Football Coaches Association Academic Achievement Award, sponsored by the Memphis Touchdown Club as the Irish had 100%
graduation rate yeah, on their football program. Really a lot of, I think when Eric Parsegian was the coach here for the decade, the lowest graduation era had rate was 98%. But sometimes these guys are playing too much like students and not enough like athletes, you know. <laughs> you want to be great students during the week to play like athletes on Saturday. 100% graduation rate. Here's Stevens trying to break tackles and lowers his head and burrows his way to the 20-yard line. Jerome Sapp and uh, Daryl Campbell were in there. Abram Elam got a piece. I think he punished them. You know, Casey uh, Clawson's mouthpiece there in his helmet. And an injured Tennessee player. It was, uh, it is Travis Stevens. Stevens yeah. with his seventh carry of the game, averaging 30. His seventh carry, he's gained 30 yards, but is shaken up. Unbelievably uh, durable. He wants to stay in, and productive this year. And an amazing thing to me, 180 carries coming in today's ball game, only two fumbles. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons the coaches keep feeding them the ball. And he takes this kind of pounding every week, yep. and then he's the first guy at practice and the next Campbell. day. He told us he thought that was pretty important to show his dedication. Mm. As you see, after Darrell Campbell hit him, he still gained four yards. Crossing in the shotgun now. It's third and three. Troy Fleming replaced Stevens. Crossan under pressure, and he's sacked. Watson came free, and then Weaver and Campbell finished him off. A loss of six, and Tennessee will have to punt. That was really good inside push very early in that pass. I think it was Daryl Campbell. You know, Watson's probably going to get credit for the sack, but inside here, here's Campbell. You know, Watson actually did come three first. And then he meets Anthony Weaver. All three of them got there about the same time. So now Reagan will punt from his own end zone. Just a couple of yards in front of it as he sends it on its way. And Julius Jones is saying stay away from it as it goes out of bounds at the 48-yard line. 33-yard punt. Stevens being attended to. Meanwhile, Notre Dame with great field position when we come back. Welcome back to Notre Dame Stadium. Travis Stevens shaken up in the last ball possession. Let's go to uh, Lewis for an update. Well, Tom, as you see Travis Stevens on the bench there, he has an ice pack on his right shin. And the word I have from the trainers is he has a bruise on that right shin. They're going to ice him, pad it up, and he'll be back in the game in a few moments. All right. Meanwhile, Carlisle Holiday going for the end zone for Hunter. Pass a little long and broken up by Andre Lott. Well, what a nice play by Andre Lott. I mean, and that thing, that, that ball came out like a rocket out of uh, Holiday's right hand. And Lott and uh, Hunter jawing a little bit after the play, face to face. It looked like Javen Hunter had him beaten, but great catch-up speed by Lott. Started with real good protection. The quarterback can step up into the pocket. That post pattern. And he, he turned into a receiver there, Andre Lott, and actually uh, hit Javen Hunter. They prevented an interception. Carlisle Holiday, three completions in seven attempts, 29 yards. From the shotgun. Play action fake, and the pass is complete. Right at the first down marker, David Gibbons, maybe a yard short as he was hit immediately by Jabari Greer. David Gibbons will graduate from Notre Dame this year, and you worry about you, 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 David Gibbons' family. You say this guy should have had more opportunities. This is a guy that has done a little bit of everything for the Irish over the years. We've seen him run the ball today. He's thrown the ball this season. Great special teams player. Just wish he would have perhaps had a few more chances. Two receptions today, as you see, and also a couple of carries. Yep. He's really always been a, a terrific special teams player. Ball is going to be about a foot short of the first down as they respot it after measuring over on the sideline. We've talked about Notre Dame's offensive line, how they've changed today, Tom. You know, everybody kind of moved around a little bit. Only Jeff Fain, the center, has stayed in the same spot. And really what they were looking for are some bigger players. They moved to tackle Jordan Black into a guard position. They're looking for a little bit more push and more consistency up front with that offensive line. Here's freshman Ryan Grant lined up at tailback, the only man in the backfield on third down and a foot. Holiday keeps and should have enough for the Notre Dame first down. Big John Henderson at the bottom of the stack for the white-shirted volunteers. Carlisle Holiday going right over his center, Jeff Fain. 
is at a big year for the Irish. And uh, the Notre Dame coach is saying they think that Jeff Bain is the best center in college football. Yeah. So after the USC game, they kind of showed a, a, they put together a videotape of Thane, what they call finishing blocks. That means, they, you know, go all the way to the whistle and beyond, kind of burying USC defenders in the sidelines on, the, on their backs. Notre Dame continues to win the field position battle, but no points as yet. With 13 minutes to go in the second quarter. Hit in the backfield is Lipinski, a rare carry, and Eddie Moore threw him for a loss. You know, Dave Borbley, the offensive line coach in Notre Dame, said, hey, he made this finishing tape. Jeff Fain, this is a few weeks ago against USC, right there, just kind of burying his guy. Just sits on him. There he is again. That's against the middle linebacker. He's pushing him all the way to the bench. And one more time, bearing the nose tackle this time. I mean, you, oftentimes you see that out of guards and tackles, but rarely you see those kind of pancake blocks from centers. Formerly the offensive line coach of the Notre Dame was a former Tennessee graduate assistant on Johnny Major's staff. Givens is wide open. Holiday has even Givens dives to the 17-yard line. White side of Baker covering there. 21-yard game, Mr. Everything, David Givens on the pass from Holiday. Indeed, he is Mr. Everything, and this is one he just kind of settles down in the middle, and Notre Dame also realizes they can't be one-dimensional against this very tough volunteer defense, so they've thrown the ball more and a little bit better than they usually do, primarily to David Givens. He's got a couple of deep balls. They've thrown a ball to a tight end. Balls at the 18, first down Irish, full house, wishbone backfield. Give is to Grant, and the freshman gets his second carry of the season. Whiteside and Stevenson, the linebackers. Now, the other time that Notre Dame had this kind of field position, Holiday sacked, took him out of field goal range, and they got no points. And, and you know one thing, too, Tom, is Notre Dame has not been terribly good at punching in balls into the end zone down in the red zone this year. I think they've only had seven times, I believe it was over 25 or 27 times down there inside the 20. Here they face a second down and 10 from the Tennessee 18 yard line. Battle resets. Reverse to battle. Tennessee had it smoked out, but he broke the tackle. Arnez battle fumbles the football, and Tennessee has it. Wow. 16-yard gain after he broke the tackle of Richmond and then fumbled at the one-yard line. Yeah, I think it was Whitestone who actually missed him and, and Richmond recovered Richmond. it. Yeah, but it was the well, white side, the defensive linebacker, who missed him early. Great call again by cover, Kevin Rogers. Good execution until the end. There's the a broken tackle. See, he's carrying the ball on the inside hand. I mean, I think you really want to carry that ball on the outside away from the defender. It was Julian Battle that Broke the ball free, and then Richmond fell on it. If he's carrying this ball in the left hand, it's a lot harder to chop it out of his hand. I and mean, you're taught that very early on in football as a ball carrier. What about that battle caused battle to fumble? <laughs> and Tennessee has it. Ball spotted at the volunteer one-yard line. Clawson changing the play. Handoff is to Fleming. And Fleming pounds it out to the five-yard line before Courtney Watson and Glenn Earl put him to the turf. That's a good word when you describe Fleming pounding. I mean, he's a 220-pound back that's got some pretty good ball-running skills. He's got the power there, but he's still quick enough on his feet where he can, you know, go for more than four or five or six yards. You see the other scores, the Sooners in the first quarter scoreless against uh, a struggling Tulsa team. Yeah. Second down and six. Yeah, in case of Lawson, I think it's seen a big cushion on the left side. Tailback, Fleming, tripped up. Courtney Watson had a big hole there. If Watson hadn't stopped him, he had some room. There's Battle who caused the Notre Dame battle to fumble. Saving uh, a big play as... Uh, Cario Harrison limps off. Third down coming up for Tennessee. They've converted two of five today. So the 
Irish leading tackler limps off the field. Replaced by Carlos Pierre Antoine. Yeah, another important third down play for Tennessee. A few moments ago, in the first quarter, they used their tight end very judiciously. Fleming the tailback, Bartholomew the fullback. Again, Clawson changes the play. Fleming picking his way forward. He has a first down. Yeah, he pounds on one play and picks on the other. And you described it perfectly. Remember a couple of plays ago, he just kind of ran right through a linebacker. We said he's, even though he's 220 pounds, he's pretty nimble on his feet, and indeed he is there. Because he isn't nimble on his feet, he's probably stuffed right there and then strong enough to break the first, uh, first hit. Replacing the injured Travis Stevens, Fleming has carried three times for 13 yards. Boston, a short drop, has the receiver wide open, Parker. Eric Parker slammed down at the 25-yard line, but I think has enough for the first down. Jerome Sapp made a sure tackle, but the gain is 11 and a Tennessee first down. I'm surprised he didn't throw this earlier because of this big cushion. I mean, I've seen this the last three or four plays, and finally they get the ball out here to Eric Parker. I mean, the corner's looking at him the whole way, but there's just no way he's going to stop that when he's, and he's got a 10-yard cushion. The theory, of course, is you have to complete a lot of those to get yourself in scoring position. Montez Duff not only gave him the cushion, but then missed the tackle. Irish show blitz. Fleming hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped in his tracks by Earl and uh, Justin Smith. Everybody got a piece of it, it looked like. Yeah, Glenn Earl, who's the free safety, you talk about filling a hole and, and, and getting a headache. He's got the whole, whole hole to himself. And he brings down Troy Fleming, all 220 pounds of him. And Glenn Earl's a guy that's been injured a lot the last couple of years for the Irish, but also a guy that when he's been in, has been very productive. Travis Stevens returns to the Tennessee backfield on second down and nine or ten. Hard to say. The Irish have their dime defense. And a blitz. Clawson rolls and delivers high and complete. Intended for Tony Brown, but the pass a little high and incomplete. Coming up on NBC. NBC Sunday, in the face of Hitler's army, they chose to fight back based on the true story. Uprising, Sunday at 9, 8 central on NBC. Casey Clawson, who's had two 300-yard passing games for the Volunteers, including... 362 last season against Kentucky has completed as you see 64 yards through the air today. Crossing in the pocket passes tipped and incomplete. Well, it was Daryl Campbell or Grant Iron but somebody got their hand up. Irish defense has been playing well today against this potent Tennessee offense but the Irish unable to take advantage of superior field position. Here's that last play. Yeah, you can't get to the quarterback. The next best thing is hope you can get a tip. A lot of interceptions caused that one. I think it was Daryl Campbell who got that. Campbell, one. maybe, or, or Hilliard. Reagan to punt. Ooh, thank you very much. Duff says stay away from it. And again, Notre Dame presented with excellent field position. They'll spot the football in volunteer territory. Notre Dame's ball scoreless game with producer Jim Bell director John Gonzalez Tom Hammond Pat Hayden Lewis Johnson at Notre Dame Stadium scoreless game with 816 left in the second quarter the Irish having squandered excellent field position this is the 17th play of this second quarter and every play this quarter has been yep. in Tennessee territory yeah, but we know the Irish are not an explosive offensive team they need to keep this a low scoring fast game I think make it to win this thing Jason Murray at fullback, Ryan Grant at tailback on this first down play. Grant, goes free at the line of scrimmage, caught by the two tops and twisted down by Burnett. Uh, he was off to the races as it was, a gain of right at 10 yards. Let's see if he has the first down. You know, we asked Bob Davey about Ryan Grant. And he said, well, I said, what do you like about him? He said, well, he's big, he's strong, and he's fast. I mean, I guess those are pretty, pretty, pretty good adjectives <laughs> for, a, for a running back. Notre Dame has had uh, superior field position. Uh, punts. Uh, punts and a fumble. Fumble was at the Tennessee one-yard line. 
You see, just short of first down yardage. Okay, when, you, when you're doing that on first down against this very talented Tennessee defense, it means your offensive line is doing a good job. Let's take a switch of Jordan Black from left tackle to left guard and Ballers over to the left tackle position. It's working out. You know, that's exactly where they ran that time. Here's the power formation from the Irish with the wishbone backfield. David Gibbons, one of the halfbacks in that formation. Boy, nothing there at the line of scrimmage. Ryan Grant kept churning and did get the first down as he crosses inside the 35-yard line. You know, you mentioned he's a freshman, but that's a that's a smart run. I mean, that's not a time where you try to bounce it out and gain 40 yards when it's second and short. You know, exactly you're trying to get the, the first down yardage. Big John Henderson, number 98, just comes into the lineup from the Tennessee sideline. Outland Trophy winner last year. And uh, All-American, 18 career sacks. Mm. 6'7", 290, does not wear size medium. <laughs> a large guy. Wears whatever he wants, yeah. actually. Right down in here. And uh, fighting off a high ankle sprain. That ball tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Intended for Javon Hunter, I believe, but uh, tipped at the line of scrimmage and incomplete. Now, John Henderson, you mentioned that high ankle sprain. He's right number 98 right there. A, a, a guy that, you know, 300 pounders have a much more difficult time responding from those kinds of injuries and it was injured the very first game and hasn't really been the player he was a year ago well of course he's been a target after all those honors and he says though it's kind of nice to see guys like overstreet and haynesworth and some of those others uh, get the double teams for a change carlisle holidays hit five of ten 59 yards there's second and ten as he switches to under center this will be the option. Fumble. Holiday picked it up and will go out of bounds. An early flag yeah. came down on the play. One thing Tennessee was ready for was the option. Absolutely. Second time, very quick penetration on the option play. Remember the last one he kind of pitched out was lucky it wasn't a turnover. And we'll get the call on the flag. You know, making good decisions is not just in the passing game, it's in the option game as well. Offsides on the defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty will repeat second down. That's a huge break for Notre Dame. So Holiday on the sideline, checking his uh, wristband for the play with the ball just inside the Tennessee 30-yard line. And that's 30 plays on each wristband. Right, there's the line of scrimmage. Looks like they certainly are crowded. It must have just been a helmet. So second down and five. Grant on the pitch. Looks for a block. Cuts back. And makes it down to the 23-yard line where Veal makes the Tennessee tackle. Oh, nice, nice decision by Ryan Grant. And a guy they you know he's got pretty good running skills they give him a chance as a freshman people were wondering when he was going to get his opportunity all year former but, new jersey player of the year yeah but you know kind of patient 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 and at the right moment he kind of cut it back to the first and henderson back to the tennessee sideline ryan grant was the new jersey player of the year don bosco prep gained 1900 yards 26 touchdowns as a senior also a hundred meter runner here he is again, Ryan Grant spins to the 15-yard line. Julian battle the tackle, and tomorrow at 3 Eastern, NBC presents the 32nd New York City Marathon, the world's best distance runners in that 26.2-mile run through New York City's five boroughs, plus members of the New York Police and Fire Departments in that special race, too. The New York City Marathon, tomorrow at 3 Eastern, only on NBC. I can imagine cannot imagine running 26 miles. I will drive it tomorrow. <laughs> we'll drive That's a little iffy. I've seen you drive. <laughs> Brian Grant in the game. Five carries, 24 yards. Second down and two. This is Gibbons. David Gibbons close to the first down. Tackled by Burnett. A really good drive and I think play calling and sequencing of plays by Notre Dame. We've seen much more diversity, I think, in, in, in terms of throwing the ball to the tight end. We, we had a reverse, although they fumbled on it. It was a very good play. And they're going to win the time of possession battle, but they won that against Boston College, yeah. too, and uh, lost on the scoreboard. Yeah, over 40 minutes uh, against Boston College. Rarely do you control the ball for 40 minutes and lose, but they did last week. 
Here they chains in from the sideline for the measurement after Gibbons run. This guy's getting a lot of work this, uh, this half. A lot of close crew. calls, yeah. huh? First down, Notre Dame. But Bob Davy has to be happy with the way this first half is going. You know, five, a little over five minutes left in this first half. The first downs, they have 133 total yards. They've been able to run the ball pretty effectively, which is a bit of a surprise. But you don't get any points for those stats. Mm -hmm. And it's still nothing, nothing with five and a half minutes to go. Second quarter. Handoff to Grant. Bumbles the football, and Tennessee has it. Goodbye. Julian Battle, who caused a fumble earlier, returns this one for the touchdown. I think one of the biggest adjustments for a freshman running back, not in the skill of running, is securing the ball. They just tackle the ball, and you'll get hit so much more in college football than you do in high school football, Tom. It's not, you know, he's not a capable runner. It's not a freshman mistake. It's just these guys just aren't used to, I think, having people strip the ball. Right here. The first hit. And yeah, the strip was right there. Battle stripped it as well as recovered it. Mark Jones got a piece of yeah. it, too. And then Battle, 81 yards. So he, he's caused two fumbles, and then he recovered one for the touch. And Walls for the extra point. Puts it up and through. So Tennessee, they've hardly had the football at all. With the Notre Dame turnover, 81 yards, Julian Battle puts the balls on top. He got that left in hand in there, just kind of ripped it away. And uh, as I said, I think that's one of the biggest adjustments you see from high school to college football. Thanks to the volunteer defense and Julian Battle scamper to the end zone, Tennessee takes the lead. 7-0 balls. Julian Battle, the junior from Royal Palm Beach, Florida, just scampering 81 yards with a fumble return to put Tennessee on top. Now Alex Walls to kick off to Julius Jones, who's deep for Notre Dame, along with Vontez Duff. Walls kickoff, sails into the end zone, and Jones will come out with it. Julius Jones, flag is down. Jones makes a move to the sideline, caught by the ankle tops and taken down at the 25-yard line by Tony Campbell. But there was a flag down on the return by Jones. He didn't look like he was going to feel too certain about bringing that one out, nope. did he? I think he was looking for Duff to tell him whether to come out or not, and Duff was a little indecisive. Here's the call. During the return, holding on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty. It'll be first down, Notre Dame. Well, today Notre Dame has fumbled twice in the red zone. The last one doubly costly. Yeah, it's been the story of the game. And one more time, you're going to see Julian Battle strip it. It's going to come right, number 14 right there with the left hand. Kind of strips it. Then he gets a kind of a fortuitous bounce and allows him to go 81 yards. He caused one earlier on the Arnez Battle, too. At the one-yard line. Yeah. So after the penalty, Notre Dame begins from its own 14-yard line, now trailing 7-0 with five minutes left, second quarter. Carlisle Holiday hands to Tony Fisher, the senior back in the game after the freshman Ryan Grant had fumbled. Well, around here at Notre Dame, you fumble as a running back, you don't play much. Remember Terrence Howard, very first play of the year fumbled. He hadn't played much since. And Ryan Grant fumbled there, and uh, you may not see a lot more of him. There's a look at Terrence Howard, who has carried 20 times this season. Still been a factor on special teams for the Irish. Triple I formation. Now Gibbons breaks to go in motion. Second down and eight. Play action fake. Holiday's pass to Gibbons. Gibbons dodging one man. And he's to the 30-yard line. Notre Dame first down. 14-yard gain. Well, uh, David Gibbons sure has a nice feel of when to settle down over that middle. It's the, the second ball he's caught basically on the same route. His 
right where the middle linebacker leaves. He kind of settles down right in there. You know, big target because he turns his shoulders right to the quarterback. And then he turns into a running back. Bernard Jackson finally chased him down. Gibbons with four catches, 46 yards. First down at the Notre Dame 30. Hand off to the tailback, Tony Fisher. Fisher tripped up but has another first down. He's to the 45-yard line. Rashad Baker went low on Fisher to get him to the turf. Look what Florida's doing to Vanderbilt. 71 nothing Gators. Victor Vanderbilt, we're reading the story. General Nealon was hired in Tennessee because they couldn't beat Vanderbilt. Wasn't that the, wasn't that the story? That's correct. We, yeah. How times have changed. <laughs> Absolutely. Three different stints at the uh, University of Tennessee for General Nealon. He was a, an ROTC instructor yeah. and became an assistant coach at Tennessee, then head coach, as you said, three different times. Interrupted when the Army sent him to Panama. Yeah. The second time by the war. By World War II. This is Tony Fisher again getting work out his fifth carry, and he's gained 28 yards. You know, Tony Fisher is, is a guy I wonder about. I, I wonder in the sense that if Notre Dame had made him their featured guy this year, or even the last couple of years, what he could have done. Because anytime he's carried the ball at least 20 times or more, he's gotten over 100 yards. He's certainly the, the, the tough man of the group. Uh, but injuries have, have yeah, held him back. Yeah, hamstrings this year. But, but this is a very capable guy that I'd like to see him carry it 25 times a game. Second down and seven. Holiday's pass to Gibbons. Nice catch. Oh. Gibbons went downstairs to get it. And he's to the 45 of the Volunteers. First slant pass I think I've really seen Notre Dame throw and complete this year. 10-yard gain on that one. Yeah, trying to give Gibbons a chance to turn into that running back that he was in high school after the catch. So we got five catches for Gibbons now. That's correct. He cut inside Teddy Gaines for that one on the slant. And the ball spotted just short of the Volunteer 45. Notre Dame continues to move it against the tough Tennessee defense, but they trail after the turnover, 7-0. Play action fake. Holiday still has it. Gets a block and sends it complete. Pass to Owens, the tight end. Bangs his way down to the 23-yard line. 21-yard gain. Holiday hitting Owens. And then Greer and Marsh make the tackle. But well, well, what a block by his, you're going to see the, the tight end. What a block by his center, 52. Watch Fain as he comes around here, just kind of cleans it up for Holiday. Here's Fain, here's the tight end. Boom, right there. And, and that allowed Cardinal Holiday plenty of time to find his uh, tight end. First down, Irish, 24-yard line of Tennessee, approaching the two-minute mark in the second quarter. Holiday from the gun, top pass mm. in traffic, and Gibbons somehow caught it. Three balls around it. Get this guy a couple more years old. <laughs> they're, they're finally using him, and, and he's making the most most of it. David Gibbons is a strong, tough receiver. He's 212 pounds. He's 6'3". three. You know, kind of extends the strike zone, and, and he wants a few more chances. Well, Notre Dame returns to the red zone where they have been two times earlier in the game and turned it over twice on fumbles by Grant and Battle. Battle in motion, resets to the right. Option and then a fake and a back to pass Holiday in trouble and wings it uh, across the sideline incomplete. And that'll be intentional grounding. He was not outside. The uh, tackle box, Overstreet and Henderson bearing down on him, and he'll be called for grounding. Absolutely, and, and, and Overstreet and Henderson really caused that one. I mean, because he, they wouldn't let him out of the pocket. And Will Overstreet, one of those, uh, only played 20 plays last week. He's got a bad ankle, but a bad knee. Intentional grounding on the offense. Uh, Lost the down, it's a spot of the foul. And it's our down. It's the right call. It's the correct call, yeah, indeed. Just talking about, there's Henderson, 98, here. Yeah, you have to maintain those blocks, and then at the end, you see Oval Street there. The thing about John Henderson, you may block him early, but you better continue to block him. Here's the tackles block. He's right, you know, that's it. He's not outside the tackles, and so it's clearly uh, intentional grounding. Well, Notre Dame's offense has been great until they get 
down where there's a chance to score. And yeah. then they have self-destructed. Uh, and it's been the story this year. They've not punched it in for many touchdowns inside the 20. Third down and nine. Lipinski is in a slot. The fullback. And with time running out on the play clock, Notre Dame spends a timeout hoping to get some points on this possession. 7-0 game just before halftime. And don't forget, near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. And Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Third and nine for the Irish from the Tennessee 23-yard line. Here comes the blitz. Shovel pass. Fisher stopped for the Tennessee defense as the pressure came on Arnez Battle. And he had to give the ball up, I think, before he wanted to. And Tennessee able to stop it, setting up a fourth down. Amari Hand was uh, all over that play. That battle wrapped up. So a field goal attempt from Nick Setta. He has hit 9 of 10, as you see. His first miss a week ago at Boston College into a stiff win. Last Irish field goal attempt against Tennessee in this stadium. What, 91 that was blocked? 41-yard attempt by Seta. Picks it up and sends it through the uprights. No hook in that thing. That was absolutely straight. So finally, Notre Dame gets some points at the end of a long drive. But they still trail. Tennessee 7, Notre Dame 3. Notre Dame kicks a field goal with 27 seconds left till halftime. 7-3 Tennessee. Nick Sedek will kick it off for Notre Dame to Leonard Scott. Deep for the Volunteers. Scott fields it at the two. Leonard Scott with a head of steam. Hit and finally dropped it about the 27-yard line by... Preston Jackson, 25-yard return. Coming up at halftime, the Sun America Halftime Report. Hannah Storm joins us from the MCI Center in Washington, D.C., where Michael Jordan will make his home debut against the 76ers right after our game. Hannah also will have an interview with uh, Wizards head coach Doug Collins, former NBC broadcaster. Uh, all that and more, scores and highlights, too, coming up on the Sun America Halftime Report. I'm thinking about getting into coaching myself. Are you? I announced that right now. With what? Coaching I'm not what, sure though? yet. My kid's soccer team or something. Rocky Boyman comes on a blitz and gets a piece of Stevens. Well, Stevens only has 29 yards rushing this game. Clawson only 64 yards passing. So Notre Dame's defense has done a pretty good job. Will Bartholomew, the Tennessee fullback, Lewis tells us from the sideline, has uh, a slight concussion. His return in the second half still to be decided. And Jabari Greer and Andre Lott also have been shaken up a bit in the Tennessee secondary. Meanwhile, we have reached halftime in a 7-3 game. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson. All right, thanks, Tom. Well, Phil, your defense has put your only points on the board off a turnover. What's happening with the offense? Talk about your adjustments for the second well, half. Notre Dame's a good defensive team to begin with, but we sure hadn't executed very well. We've had uh, the one opportunity that we've turned the ball over down there, and other than that, we just really haven't done very much. Hopefully, we'll come back out and play better in the second half. All right, Phil, thanks so much. Tom? All right, Lewis. So... Getting ready for the third quarter at Notre Dame Stadium as the seventh-ranked Volunteers lead Notre Dame 7-3. The difference in the game, an 81-yard fumble return for a touchdown by Julian Battle. The underdog Irish, so if they've proven nothing else, it's that they uh, can play with this team. Yeah, well, you know, Notre Dame has run for more yards. They've passed for more yards. they possessed, you know, two to one in time, but it was the big turnover. Actually, two turnovers right. that really were the difference, I think, in the first half. You know, Notre Dame got down in its scoring territory. That's a battle causing the fumble on Arnez battle down at about the two-yard line. And then battle again, number 14 from Tennessee, strips him, gets the nice basketball bounce. 81 yards later, it's a 7 nothing ball game. So Notre Dame uh, gets the ball twice in the red zone, or actually three times in the red zone, mm -hmm. kick a field goal just before halftime, but the two big turnovers. The battle fumble was right at the one-yard line. So they dominate the stats, but not on the scoreboard. Let's take a look at those Tyco halftime stats, and you'll see that especially in the time of possession that the Irish have the advantage, 19.55 to 10.05 for the Volunteers. But it's 7-3 Tennessee as Nick Setta tees it up to start the second half. 
And a look at Leonard Scott, who is the deep man for the Volunteers. And about to get the third quarter underway. The seventh-ranked balls. And Notre Dame. And he set a kick out of the end zone for the touchback. And let's go down to Lewis Johnson. Lewis? Okay, Tom, thanks a lot. I caught Bob Davey as he came out of the tunnel a few moments ago, and he said he thought his team played well. He says they're not getting down about the situation they're in. He said things happen in a football game, and they did not talk about what the score should be because of the turnovers, but they're focused on, on what the score will be in the second half. That's the approach that Davey has here. Bob? Tom? All right, Lewis. <laughs> That's what Bob said, and Tom is here in the booth. Beware of Phil Fulmer and the Volunteers in the fourth quarter, though. They have owned the fourth quarter of their games this season. They're going to have to really get Travis Stevens going. Clawson changing the play on this first down. It's a short drop. He looks to pass, gets away from one tackler, and then down at the 21-yard line. Cedric Hilliard got him down after he escaped the initial rush. Yeah, you know, the tight end, Jason Witten, it didn't even see it. This was an audible, and he was expecting to throw the ball to Witten. Witten wasn't even looking. The tight end was split out, and Witten did not even look for the pass. Did not, must not have heard the audible. And Casey Clawson said something to him coming back into the huddle. Anthony Weaver went right by him uh, to disrupt the play. Clawson lucky to get a yard out of it. Clawson getting to the tailback. Stevens, a couple of yards. Torrio Harrison back in the game for Notre Dame, makes the tackle. Here's an update on the uh, Tennessee injuries we mentioned just before halftime. Uh, starting fullback Will Bartholomew is doubtful for the second half with a mild concussion. And the two quarterbacks, Andre Lott and Jabari Greer, Lott has a left hamstring strain and is questionable. And Greer left five bruise, also questionable for the second half. Stevens calling for the face mask, but no call. And it'll be third and six. Stevens has carried nine times for only 28 yards. Yeah, yeah. Remember, remember a guy that uh, carry averages 30 carries a ball game. Dime defense for Notre Dame, six defensive backs, and a four wide receiver set for the Volunteers. Clawson's in the shotgun, directing traffic. Still plenty of time on the play clock. Here's the snap. Clawson's pass, broken up and intercepted. Watson has it for Notre Dame, calling for blockers. Courtney Watson cuts back, still on his feet. Touchdown! for the extra point. And it's good. Both touchdowns today coming from the defense. Yeah, and, and here's Watson, and here's Elam. Watch that. It looks like a blitz first, so he fakes the blitz, then he comes out. He jumps the slant, because he knew it, it was a corner blitz, knew they were going to run with the slant, gets the you know, hand on the ball, does Elam, Elam. And then Watson picks it up and then turns into a, a running back. He was a high school running back, as many of these DBs and linebackers at Notre Dame were in high school. Look at him looking for his blockers now. And think of a nice one by Shane Walton, number 42. Both touchdowns in the game from the defense. 10-7, Irish. From Notre Dame Stadium, Tom Hammond, Pat Hayden, Lewis Johnson, Casey Clawson just tossing his sixth interception of the season on the tip ball, and Courtney Watson takes it 31 yards for the score. Notre Dame in front for the first time. Nick Setter to kick off. Derek Tinsley deep for Tennessee. Set his kick out of the end zone. He's booming it the last two, and Clawson will come right back on the field after yeah. this play. This could have been interference by Elam. But I think he's actually driving for the slant pass that was then tipped. And then Watson, one more look at it. There's a corner blitz by Shane Walton. He gets his left hand on it, and an athletic uh, Courtney Watson takes it. That was a good run. And then 42, Shane Walton. Actually, Shane Walton may have blocked somebody in the back there. Might have been a clip on Shane Walton. 
Uh, Watson, you mentioned, was a high school running back, rushed for 2,500 yards and 25 touchdowns. So Clawson right back to the air, and it's batted down, deflected at the line of scrimmage, intended for Graham, and Shane Walton got a hand on it. You know, I think the toughest thing for a quarterback to do on the road is respond to an interception like that, which, you know, snatches your team, the, the lead from the, your team. And, and how he responds here now, we've talked about some of the environments that he has to play in. This is a guy that ordinarily completes a very high percentage of his passes, 64%. He's at 40 today. Lawson backs up into the shotgun. Handoff. Stevens trying to get the corner. Nothing doing. Notre Dame meets him at the 20-yard line and drives him back. For Troy Fleming, number 27, just going to roar the absolute boom on one of the linebackers from Notre Dame. Game around the corner. He's right here, 27. Just kind of cleans up his guy. Fulton Usel does a good job at right tackle. Bobby Graham, number 11, stays away. But again, four blue jerseys around the ball carrier. And Courtney Watson's fired up. He fought off a blocker to get a piece. Ten carries, 29 yards now for Steven. Dime defense, Notre Dame. Four wides, Tennessee. Three to the top of the formation. Clawson on the slant, complete to Washington. Kelly Washington with his first reception of the day. It and goes that, for 14. And, and Tom, that's a surprise to me. This is a guy, they, they call him a walk-on. He's the best walk-on perhaps <laughs> you've, you've ever heard talk about manna from he heaven. This guy's a 22-year-old freshman, played four years of minor league baseball, wrote a letter to one of the assistant coaches at Tennessee, asked if he could come walk on. They got a look at his size and said, absolutely, and he's been wowing the team in the conference ever since. You better get your hands on him quickly in the routes. Played some quarterback, too, but in the preseason and in the spring. Handoff. Stevens on the draw. And he's down the sideline. Stevens, one man to beat. He's bumped out of bounds. There's a penalty marker down. They're going to call Kelly Washington for a hold. Kelly Washington's going to have caught right in front of the Notre Dame bench. He chopped his man, then got back up and held the Notre Dame defender. First thing is, he goes out and cuts Clifford Jefferson. No penalty there. There's where he gets the hold. He gets the left hand on Jefferson right in front of the Notre Dame bench. Everybody was pointing at it. And easy call. They mentioned Washington in the uh, preseason worked at quarterback. He has maybe the strongest arm on the team. They say he can throw it 70 yards on the fly. He told us that the four years of minor league baseball made him into a man. He has been all of that. He, he is a walking physical mismatch as soon as he steps out of the huddle down here nearly set the record for SEC receptions did set the Tennessee record. here's a blitz by Notre Dame swing pass is complete to Stallworth Stallworth has the block Stallworth down the sideline cuts back and taken down at the 30 yard line by Jerome Sapp 38 yards and a Tennessee first down one of those bubble screens you see in college football but the block of Bobby Graham number 11 really set the stage for Dante Stallworth. I mean, he, he, he's going to get the ball. The block comes up here, excuse me, right here. The inside guy here, but there's the block by Graham. And that allowed him to use that speed to catch the alley. Breaks a tackle. And two nice pass plays by the Volunteers. First and 10, Tennessee, 29-yard line of the Irish. Lawson from the shotgun, four wide receivers. Draw play, Stevens. Got away from one man. Cuts back the other way. Looks for a block and slips down for a loss on the play. With Shane Walton bearing down on him. Well, it was Grant Irons, number 44, kind of stayed at home that time. Really got that defensive play started. He's known for that. Yeah, staying at home and making some plays. Down here, see? Kind of, you know, dodges the block there of Reggie Coleman and forces uh, Stevens back into a bunch of blue jerseys. Here's that four-wide formation again. Trips to the near side of the field. 
on second down and 13. I don't know what that play was. Washington had to go to a knee to make the catch and then uh, was immediately hit. That was a bad looking play from the start. Yeah, well, you didn't fool Monte Duff. Number 34 was part of the problem. No cushion on that, on that play. I think the corner has to be off considerably to be able to do that. And you know, Vontez Duff has kind of come on to the Irish. Two interceptions uh, each, uh, one interception each of the last two weeks has added kind of a, a swagger and an attitude to their defense, which they don't have much of. Loss of three on the play, third down, 15. Shotgun, four wide. Pawson in the pocket. Whips it complete to the 20-yard line, but short of the first down. Jefferson hit Parker immediately, and he's going to be a yard short of the first down. Absolutely drilled this ball. Good throw. Here he is. He's going to run the square in. These guys are going to clear it out, but it's a square in route here. But you can't throw a deep route like that unless you get the protection up front. It allows Clawson to step into the throw. And just shy. It looks like they're going to go for it. Fourth down and a yard. They're going to call a timeout first. Fourth and one. They're going to discuss it. Tennessee has converted two of three fourth downs this season. Will they go for it on fourth here? We'll find out when we return to Notre Dame Stadium. Smokey and the ball fans see their team go for it on fourth and one, trailing by three with the ball at the Notre Dame 20-yard line. Three tight ends in this formation and a wing as well. Stevens, the tailback. Fleming, the fullback. Witten resets left side. Stevens dies. It'll be close. We've got a nice spot, I think. Yes, Travis Stevens is 5'9", 190 pounds, but he is absolutely tough. We talked about how he, you know, he got the first down. And, and that's a big run. You think of 40-yard runs being big guns, but big runs, but when it's fourth and one, and you squeeze your way through a hole, that's, there's not much room and gain that yard, that's a big run. As we uh, stood next to and talked to Travis yesterday, I think that 5'9 uh, is a little generous to Yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> he is a one tough customer. Sort of uh, settled down in his life, married and uh, matured and carrying the load for the volunteers. Pound the rock is Coach Fulmer's in. First down at the 19 of the Irish. Fawson, slant complete to the six-yard line to Parker. Hit by Walton and Earl, but it's good for 13 yards. It'll be first and goal, Tennessee. So that, that was a slow developing slant. If you're a wide receiver, you know there's some unfriendly people there waiting for you. Big cushion there by Shane Walton. And it gets, he's waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, it gets there. He's just happy that there was enough juice on that ball that he was able to catch it before the free safety. Good drive here by uh, the Volunteers. Really the best of the game. Yeah. First and goal from the Notre Dame six-yard line. Finlayson and Witten, two tight ends. One wide out, Stevens the tailback. Fleming the fullback as Pawson changes the play. Stevens goes up top, driven back for the Notre Dame defense. Still got a couple of yards. Tario Harrison, first to hit him. This is where this offensive line of Tennessee has been awfully good this year. Down inside the 10-yard line, Fred Weary, the left guard in particular. Holman, number 71, and Weary on the left side. Fred, uh, uh, Phil Fulmer was saying to us about Fred Weary this, this uh, week. Hey, he's our best offensive lineman. And when your head coach is an old offensive lineman, yep. that, that means something. Right in here. Again from the eye. Stevens breaking to the outside. He'll race and score the touchdown. Blocked by the wide receiver. In by Fred Weary, the guy we were just talking about. The left guard and the wide receiver. I guess it was Washington there. Really allowed Stevens enough time to use the speed. Here's number 70 in the pull, and then down here. You know, Kelly Washington's kind of tying his guy up. If he doesn't do that, Stevens doesn't, isn't allowed to get in the corner of that end zone. As he slips into the drum section, <laughs> scoring his uh, eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Beating your own drums, is that what it's called? Oh, thank you yeah. very much. Alex Walls will attempt the extra points. And he puts it through. So Tennessee's best drive of the day with their workhorse, Travis Stevens, carrying the ball. And Tennessee regains the lead, 14-10. 
Casey Clawson, the uh, Californian, directing the Tennessee drive, their best drive of the day, an 80-yard drive in 12 plays, five minutes, with Stevens scoring the touchdown. Casey Clawson, whose uh, younger brother Rick is a mm. redshirt freshman quarterback at LSU, when the Tigers and the Vols played, the family dressed up in uh, orange on one side and purple and gold on the other. That kickoff will trickle out of bounds at the one as Julius Jones watched it go out, that'll be a penalty, and Notre Dame will have pretty decent field position for their first play offensively in this second half. Let's go to Lewis. Tom, thanks so much. The Tennessee trainers were awfully busy at the half. A couple of valuable DBs are uh, injured right now. Andre Lott, uh, right hamstring, he is out, will not return. And the number 33, Jabari Greer, with a left five ruse. They evaluated him. He's got pads on that. They'll try him out, but they're not sure if he'll play the rest of the game. Tom? All right, Lewis, thank you very much. There's some talented quarters to it. Jabari Greer, in particular. And uh, defensive coordinator John Shavis was saying to us, hey, he, he, we've had some good corners here, but he is the perhaps the best cover corner we've ever had. And the fullback Bartholomew out for the second half on their offensive side. Notre Dame's first offensive play of the third quarter. It's a handoff to Fisher, and he has a hole for a moment. Squirts across the 40 to the 41-yard line. Moore and Whiteside credit for the Tennessee tackle. It's kind of been a flip-flop in terms of domination of the football. Tennessee so far in this third after Notre Dame had dominated possession in the first. Yeah, really pretty efficient day throwing for Carlisle Holiday. Yeah, we haven't seen him, you know, actually carry the ball much, which I anticipated in quarterback draws and some option plays. Yeah, Tennessee's defense was determined not mm -hmm. to let him beat him on a play like this, the option. And once again, they defend it well as he will get about three yards close to a first down hit by Stevenson and Moore. Now tomorrow at 4 Eastern, NBC continues coverage of the 2001 Gravity Games. The BMX bikers on the half pipe and the finals of women's wakeboarding and a preview of the four-man street ludes on the Gravity Games tomorrow at 4 <laughs> Eastern on NBC. You don't know anything about any of those sports. How do you? do you know that? I just had this feeling. You, you could make Paul Harvey look hip. <laughs> <laughs> You have no clue about this. Place. You'd like to see me on the skateboard, wouldn't you? Yeah. First down, Irish after the uh, run by Holiday from their own 45 option again. Pitch just as he's hit to Fisher, he stumbles and gets the yard. And, and old Jabari Greer, number 33, had he not stumbled, was there to make the play. We talked about Jabari Greer being a good corner in, in terms of coverage. And Jackson forced the pitch. From Holiday, they were determined the Holiday wasn't going to get 100 yards on them. Yeah, which is you know the middle linebacker's got to make a play here. You're going to make a play, and then if, if, even if he gets there, you've got a guy who's going to make a play. And that was Jabari Greer. Actually, Alabama had some success mm -hmm. running the option against Tennessee. Not today. Fisher, after that pitch, got a yard, seven carries, 35 yards in the afternoon. Holiday changing the play. Two seconds to snap it. They got it away. Option. Toss it to Fisher. And Fisher oh. is tripped up on a short tackle by Baker. Yeah, Rashad Baker's made a couple of good open field tackles, Tom. And this was a guy that's only well, he's only been a defensive player for two years. A year ago, he missed some tackles playing safeties. He got used to that position, but a much better tackler this year for the Volunteers. So third and long, third and seven, and they haven't converted one of those today. Holiday not nearly as effective a passer when the opposition knows he's going to throw. Blitz coming. And the flags will stop that one. A lot of pointing going on. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. The rest of the time was inside. Larry up the right guard over there. Yeah. Notre Dame's right guard. It's Sean Mahan. We mentioned this uh, officiating crew. Butch Lambert, the umpire, getting close to retirement. A veteran Southeastern Conference official. There he is. 28 years. And his dad was an umpire for 30 years, so 58 years uh, between the two of them. Travis Stevens ran over him in the Alabama game. Yeah. <laughs> Holiday sacked. 
once again with Tennessee knowing he had to put it in the air on third and long. They come after him with a vengeance, and Jackson will get credit for the sack for Bernard. That is his second sack of the season. You know, these defensive ends from Tennessee ought to make some sacks because the inside guys really force these quarterbacks outside. And, and again, really good first step by Bernard Jackson, who comes cleanly in to, uh, to make the sack. Baker awaiting the Hillbold punch. Good one by Joey Hillbold. Baker retreats to his nine-yard line, looking for a block. Nothing there. Good special teams coverage by the Irish. Hillbold's punt covered 49 yards, nine yards on the return. The Tennessee will have the ball, leading by four. Tennessee leading Notre Dame 14-10. The Vols rank seventh in the nation, five and one. Oddly enough, they're only lost this season at home. They lead Georgia 24-20, 44 seconds left with the Bulldogs on a final march. That was David Green to Gary Damian. And then Green again, this time Randy McMichael, a 26-yard gain. Green and McMichael hooking up, and then the winning touchdown, a wide open Vernon Hayes from six yards out, and Georgia shocks Tennessee, scoring in the final 44 seconds to win 26-24 at Neyland Stadium. Yeah, but they're still in the, uh, the national championship hunt. You know, they went on to beat Alabama, South Carolina, they have Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and then Florida now late in the year. That was the game postponed after the terrorist tragedy September 11th. Lob it oh. up, and the oh. pass incomplete intended for Stallworth, defended by Walton. So Tennessee is very much in the hunt for the SEC championship and, uh, as you said, for the national championship with the one loss in that big game with Florida, now the final game of the season. You know, Phil Fulmer has done really a remarkable job. Ten years as a head coach there, been to a bowl game every year, and pretty significant bowl games each of those ten years. The winningest active coach in 1A college football. Second down and 10 after the incomplete pass. Casey Clawson. Pass broken up by Walton again, intended for Stallworth. You know, I think these Tennessee receivers are a lot better, you know, when they're moving away from this man-for-man -man coverage. Notre Dame plays so much man-for-man. -man. Hook routes, I, I think, just gives the defense too much time to, to react. You run those crossing routes, you run away from them. It's about the third play that Shane Walton is knocked down. Walton not going for the pump fake from Clawson. So a third down coming up for the Volunteers. They've converted four out of ten this afternoon. This one third and ten. Four wide receivers. Three to the far side of the field. And Kelly Washington down here has really got that one pass. He's defended by Jefferson. Notre Dame showing a little blitz. Here it comes, but they picked it up, and the pass to Washington complete. He's got a first down to the 32-yard line. Jefferson defending on the play, but 14 yards and a Tennessee first down. A presidential delight, Washington against uh, Jefferson. Jefferson. Yeah, you like that? The three, you know, they, good, good, they spread three wide receivers on the other side, and then you get your 6'4", 225-pound guy matched up on a 5'9", defensive back. I mean, it's good coaching. Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, likes that matchup. And they win it again. And with that completed pass, Casey Clawson, the sophomore quarterback from Northridge, California, has just passed 3,000 career passing yards. 3,007 to be exact. Clawson again to the air. And on a comeback, Washington makes the catch. Under throw, let him come back and get it. 15 yards. Walton again burned. This time, uh, Washington uh, makes the catch. This time on Shane Walton instead of Jefferson. Well, it, it doesn't matter with his size and his strength. Now, remember, he is just learning to become a wide receiver. It was, uh, we talked about him playing baseball, but when he played football, he was a quarterback before that. You know, still learning the, the, how to run disciplined routes, but you throw the ball up like that, he's going to out-jump most players. All four of those catches in the second half. Now Stevens. No gain. Hit by Gerald Irons. You know, quickly, Casey Clawson puts that mouthpiece right in his helmet right there every time. The orange thing. I, I've never seen a quarterback take his, take it have his mouth so quickly, put it in his helmet, then he'll call the play, looks over, looks, looks over the sideline, gets the play, calls it, and sticks it back in. But he must do this 150 times a game, and he hasn't lost one all season, he told <laughs> yesterday. That's the amazing thing. Take some talent. Second down play from the shotgun. 
Blitzer. Here comes the blitz. Clawson hit as he delivered incomplete. Intended for Whitten. You know, that's where I think Casey Clawson has to has to see or feel. I mean, as you, you saw the safety kind of running up, and you saw, you know, Rocky Boyman. When you see the veins in his arms, it's usually a pretty good feeling he's going to come. And, you know, even though he's in the blind side, you have to feel that when you see the safety move over and that linebacker kind of uh, look like he's coming hard. Clawson now 11 of 20. For 169 yards, but the one interception went for a Notre Dame score. Big down here for Notre Dame defense. Clawson has protection. Washington with a catch. Washington chased down by Jason Beckstrom, but an easy slant for 18 yards and another Tennessee first down. Yeah, Notre Dame took uh, Clifford Jefferson off of Washington, put Beckstrom on him, but it didn't do much good. Right here. Again, the release. They try to get your hands on him so he can't get a clean release, but he's just so strong and so quick. I mean, for a guy who hasn't played receiver much, boy, he's got a very good release off the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Tennessee continues to drive the football. 2.44 left, third quarter. They're up 14-10. They have a first down. Irish 32. Notre Dame again shows the blitz. And they back out of it. And it's Stevens. Stevens. Touchdown saving tackle by Jerome Sapp. He was the only man left between Travis and the goal line. That's the 17th carry of the game for Travis Stevens. And he's gained 48 yards. Good play calling is sequencing plays. And, and Randy Sanders, the offensive coordinator, is doing a good job of sequencing he, his plays. Pass, 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 run a little inside trap, and everything seems to be working right now for Tennessee. And they're working on the clock, too. Now down, under two minutes. Third quarter. Extra man up here, single cover. Boston looking that way, throws it out of bounds. Coming to NBC tomorrow night at 9, 8 central, it's the world premiere of Uprising. Lili Sobieski, Donald Sutherland, Hank Azaria, David Schwimmer star in an epic story of courage in the face of unspeakable evil based on the story of the Warsaw Rebellion. That's the premiere of Uprising tomorrow night, 9, 8 central on NBC. There's Randy Sanders. As he said, kind of sequencing plays. Uh, nice opportunity now to hit his tight end, Jason Whitten, who's caught two passes Today, he's down here. Another third down play. Clawson looks over the middle. Why not? It works again for a first down. Walton tackles, this time Graham, on the reception. Nine yards. Volunteer first down. They're going to go to it till Notre Dame stops it. Well, Randy Sanders said to us uh, this week, hey, our most valuable player thus far this year has been Bobby Graham, number 11, the wide receiver. He's blocked for us, catches the ball. He says, you throw it to him, right? number 11. So he worked to, he's going to catch it. Which is a very good attribute for a wide receiver. <laughs> Thank you. But he does, uh, you know, the little things. Does a lot of blocking, linebackers, uh, defensive ends we've seen him block. Number 17. Ball first down. Clawson again to the air. Throws to the end zone and overshoots Washington. It had him. That, that was one. If he drills that ball, he's got him for a touchdown. Watch Kelly Washington. I mean, he, inside release, he has him. He's expecting, it's, if he drills it there, it, it's a touch. But he, he was expecting more of a fade rather than a slant route. Boston in the mm. second half only has hit 9 of 16 for 133 yards. He's got he didn't have the ball much in no, the first half. Right. Gotten into a rhythm. Washington on the sideline on the second and 10. Play action fake. Casey Clawson for the end zone and Stallworth for the touchdown. He's happy in the band's happy. The wrong bone section got into it. <laughs> well, Washington had gotten behind Vontez Duff on the previous play. Mm -hmm. Washington goes out. They call the same play this time. Stallworth in. And this time it works for the touchdown yeah, against Duff. Yeah, he, he's the man in motion. And what, he, he gives the, uh, the quarterback plenty of room to throw this ball back here. 
You know, so it, it's, it created a big passing lane for the quarterback, so a very disciplined route by Dante Stallworth. Walls will attempt the extra point. And his kick is good. Tennessee goes up 21-10. And what a nice drive here again. And the first, the move, you take it inside, he bite, duck bites on the post route, and then he makes the nice adjustment to get in the end zone. The trombone section is very happy. On that drive, Tennessee converted three times on third and long. And they score to go up 21-10. Rocky Top uh, echoing through Notre Dame Stadium as Casey Clawson on that drive hit 5 of 10, 74 yards, converted three times on third and long and tosses the touchdown pass to Stallworth. And now Vontez Duff, who was beaten on the touchdown with a chance to return, back along with Julius Jones. This will be Jones. Hit hard and taken down at the 25-yard line. Special teams coverage has been good on both sides today. This time it is uh, Mark Jones that makes the tackle for Tennessee. There's Vontez though. Yeah, the, the toughest thing for a cornerback is, is forgetting. I mean, you really want to, you have to be able to put those kind of plays out of your mind because you're going to have a chance potentially to win the game you know, in the next series. He's, he's, so he's, he's had a pretty good uh, last couple of games as we said intercepting two passes. A minute five left in the third and now down 21-10. Do the dynamics change for the Notre Dame offense? Do they have to go more to passing or can they still run the football? I think one thing they need to get Carl Holliday with some opportunities on some draws. Here's a handoff to Julius Jones. And Jones breaks free and crosses the 40 to the 42-yard line. A 16-yard run before he's tackled by Rashad Baker. And one more time, Rashad Baker uh, makes a, a touchdown-saving catch. Good blocks in here. Good pull by Black, number 78. Number 79, Mayhan does his job. Ballers comes around. Was a flag on the play and a penalty against Tennessee for offside, which obviously was declined. First down, Notre Dame at the Irish 41. Option. Holiday. Stop for a loss by Overstreet, who uh, welcomed back to the Tennessee lineup. He's from Jackson, Mississippi. He said uh, first time he walked into Neyland Stadium, sold out for a game. He said. This is it. The most people I've ever seen in one place in my life. This yeah. is where I'm going. And, and, and boy, he played well. You know, uh, finance major, all academic uh, SEC. Three and, times, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's been kind of banged up knee, but is uh, one of those guys that, whether it's the first play or the 70th play of the game, is going to give you everything he has. Second and ten. Once again, Tennessee defends the option superbly. And Holiday will roll, looking to throw. And receiver fell down, Gibbons, and got back up, but that disrupted the play, and it'll bring up third down and ten. Boy, Gibbons was open. Mm. He was getting the cushion that time from the Tennessee defense, but slipped down. And before he could get back up, the pass sailed by. It was Greer, who was injured earlier, that slipped on the play. Notre Dame has uh, yet to convert a third and long today. Well, the minus one rushing yards in Holiday, the big strike. Remember, he's averaging 114 yards rushing over the last three ball games. Holiday rolls. He's got room to run. Then he pitches it to Gibbons. Well, he's going to give it to him. Yep. And it'll be a reception. Gibbons, who sent flying into the Tennessee bench, it's good for 14 yards. And a first down for Notre Dame. What about Givens? Is he a gamer or what? Absolutely. And as we said, he, he does so many different things well. He's right here in the slot. You know, the concentration of catching the ball and still being able to get a foot down. And then uh, the athleticism <laughs> to get over the bench. Let's see if he gets that foot down. Yep. Possession. It didn't look like his foot was down there. Didn't see it from that angle. It looked like he did not. Seven catches, 79 yards for David Givens. Julius Jones on first down, turns out about five yards. Baker another tackle. And that will bring the third quarter to a close. 
more look at that uh, catch on the sidelines by David Givens. Yeah, he had the right foot. He did have yeah. Had he a did. foot down. Mm -hmm. Good call. Third quarter ends with Tennessee leading 21-10. Back to Notre Dame after these messages from your local NBC station. Tennessee takes command of the game in the third quarter, outgaining Notre Dame 175 yards to 46 and scoring twice as the strains of Tchaikovsky's 18-12 overture herald in the fourth quarter at Notre Dame Stadium. But the fourth quarter has been very friendly for the Volunteers this season, despite that collapse in the final 44 seconds at home against Georgia. They have owned the fourth quarter. In terms of score and time of possession, Fighting off tacklers, Julius Jones gets two or three tough yards. Demetrius Stevenson, the tackle. Dominique Stevenson, the tackle. Here are the numbers on that fourth quarter domination by the Volunteers. That scored their opponent 62-29. Third and four here for the Irish. Carlisle Holiday from the shotgun. Slant pass. Mm. Givens takes it away from the defense. And indeed, he did. Strong hands. I mean, if he didn't have the strong hands on that one, the line judge would tell him to settle down a little bit. That's an incompletion. T took it away from Yeah, him. absolutely. Good coverage. This guy, what's that now? Is it seven for Gibbons? Well, let's see. It's too many for us to count. It's more fingers than I have on one hand. <laughs> it is eight. Indeed, almost 100 yards of receptions. 93 yards. That's a career high for David Gibbons. More importantly for the Irish, it gives them a first down at the Tennessee 25. Julius Jones broke free for a moment in the middle and then collapsed after he got a pretty good gain on first down by Rashad Baker. Yeah, that's the key against Tennessee is getting some positive yardage on the ground on first game, uh, first down. Because if you don't, they've got very, very good pass rushers as we've seen already. There are the numbers on Jones. Now second down and three after he got seven on first down. Tony Fisher watches from the sideline. Holiday with a handoff again to Jones. Nothing this time. Met at the line of scrimmage by Robert Peace. Backup linebacker for the Volunteers. Mm. Yeah. Peace in a battle on the defensive side of the ball for him right now. Looks like Amari Hand, number 91, had a portion of the tackle as well. Robert Peace, the sophomore from Ruston, Louisiana. Yeah, Sean Mahan did a very good job that play against John Henderson. Talked about him being moved to right guard. That's been a good matchup. Big third and two play for the Irish. They're in the eye with Murray and Jones. Julius Jones, mm -hmm. nowhere to go. That stopped at the line of scrimmage. The Tennessee defense with Haynesworth and Ritzman stopping at Cole. They're down by eight points. At, at some, yeah, at some point, you, you trade the field goal. Well, it's fourth down and no Nick Seta on the field as yet. Yeah, it's, it's an eight-point ball game. So fourth down and three from the Tennessee 18, and Notre Dame will go for it. Fourth and three. I take it here. And 11 of 17 on the season. That's Gibbons in motion. Holiday fakes the handoff pass complete first down Notre Dame Gibbons again and, and was he well covered by Teddy Gaines, Gaines number 12 was, was lapped on he wasn't he he was on his back piggyback it, it looked like Gaines knew the route but you know what I, I think it's it, the play calling a go to the guy who's hot a little bit like basketball I mean he's catching everything that's thrown to him he's getting open and even when he's covered, he's catching the ball as he was there. <laughs> Nine catches, 99 yards, David Givens, career high. And he keeps the Notre Dame drive going. Now first and 10 from the Tennessee 12. Big fourth down conversion by the Irish. Option play. Holiday this time has some room. 
inside the five-yard line where Hand finally tracks him down. You, know, you throw the ball a little bit, you get the ball to David Gibbons, but then down here is where Cardo Holiday is going to have to carry the Irish. Again, a very strong runner, more like, as we said, the single-wing tailback. He's part fullback, part halfback, really strong like a fullback, but has the niftiness of a, of a halfback. Second down, three from the five-yard line. Notre Dame can make a first down without scoring. Full house, wishbone backfield. Holiday handing off. Julius Jones didn't get much push there. Well, that's hard against you know, Tennessee down there, running down there. They play good goal line defense. They had 10 guys at the line of scrimmage. One wide receiver was split out and one defensive back, but everybody else was up at the line of scrimmage. So now they come with both Tony Fisher and Julius Jones. It's third down and two. They scored on a two-point play as well. Holiday. Oops, here's the first down. And that'll give him free first. Franklin. Unless he was drawn off. It is offside Tennessee. Well, that's a freebie. Let's listen to the count by Carlisle Holiday. He wasn't even into the hut hut part of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Franklin just uh, a little over anxious. Which yeah. I never understand when the ball's right in front of you. Giving it a long look. The ball just inside the five yard line. That would put it at about, about the two and a half. Pat? Yeah, didn't they give that? Yeah, they give him the first down, right? Yeah, I think they were giving it a long look over there. Dead ball, offsides on the defense. Half the distance to the goal. It will be just short of a first down. Okay, there's the answer. So just short is uh, mm. worth mm. some pain in the uh, hip or back area. And he's one of those really good inside guys you want on you know third and less than one. So third down and inches from a first down. You follow Jeff Fain here to center. This guy. Handoff. Fisher. Oh, Boy, he didn't yeah. get he didn't need much, but he sure didn't get much. Oh, it was Henderson, number 98. Fisher, who is uh, the toughest Irish runner. John Henderson did get a piece of it, and they'll have to look at it. The University of Tennessee has really played good short yarded defense this year, in South Carolina in particular. But here he is, right here. Okay, good. Yeah, really kind of a nice scrape down the line by John Henderson. Crucial measurement here for the Irish. Oh, it's so close. You know, it's funny. I was talking to first down. I was talking to Fisher right before the game today about there's a cap on the end of that first of the stick, and it really kind of sticks out from the stick about a quarter of an inch. Looks like he made it just by the amount of the cap. That was about as close as the, a cap's worth. <laughs> there you go. So it gives Notre Dame a first and goal with the ball at the two-yard line. And the coach is thinking touchdown, and they're thinking about a two-point play. Holiday to Fisher. Tried to get outside. That was cut off. Then he cut up. And who else? Rashad Baker, yeah. who's been a giant on defense for the balls today. Yeah, you're right, Tom. I mean, it looked like Fisher was going to be able to bounce that one out and race to the corner. But Rashad Baker just kind of seized the corner first and then forced him back inside. Number 16, the free seat. So he looks like he's going to bounce outside. Holds him up to get some help. Really good play. So the 16th play of the Notre Dame drive, it's a second and goal. Option, Holiday, he's gonna keep, hit hard, drives short of the goal line, and did he fumble? Oh man. No, they say he was down, was no that, fumble. It was battle that time, the other safety. And both these guys, you know, battles caused a fumble, he scored a touchdown when I mean, he caused a second fumble. 
he's a strong safety bakers the free safety these guys are making some plays well you're seeing why Tennessee is one of the best rush mm. defensive teams in college football they have been for the last seven years ranked in the top 15 they well, spun the ball out but the referee ruled he was down well was he though well he's still moving that ball's out that should be a fumble that, that, that is a fumble I think third and goal from the one Fisher on a white jersey goal touchdown The ball only has to break the plane of the goal line, and boy, it barely did, if at all. Well, I thought it was a fumble before. Now they have to go for two because, remember, it's an eight-point uh, eight ball game. But I thought the play before was a fumble, but nonetheless. Boy, that was hard fought, I'm yeah. telling you. And only the second rushing touchdown there you go. against Tennessee all season. You see why. Yeah, they are awfully good. down. They turned you know, South Carolina away a couple times down there a week or so ago. So they'll go for two, trailing 21-16 after the long, hard-fought touchdown drive. You look for Gibbons or maybe a tight end here. Or Holiday, and again, one of those kind of options or draws. Well, he used up about all the options, and maybe it wasn't enough. No, mm -hmm. no call timeout to discuss it with the play clock ticking down. So the Irish will call timeout and give their two-point conversion some thought over on the sideline. So Notre Dame set to go for two. When we return, it's 21-16 Tennessee. The Golden Dome in the gloaming at Notre Dame Stadium. The Irish have just scored on a 17-play drive. Now they're going to go for two, trailing Tennessee 21-16 at 8.04 on the clock. Two-point conversion try. Carlisle Holiday retreats to pass. Shovel pass. Fisher. He got it. Two-point conversion. Good. Nice call and terrific execution. Clever little play. As discreet as some of that Chardonnay you like to order. You know? Let's go back to some of these plays. So I, I still believe that Carlisle Holiday fumbled a few plays ago. Let's go back to that one first. Again, he's still moving. The ball's in his right mid there. Still moving. Still alive. And that ball's out, and I don't think he's down. I think that's a fumble right there. And then, then they call the touchdown to play later when Tony Fisher, I mean, he used everything he has. I don't think this ball early crosses the plane, but when it comes down on the line, which it does, as soon as it hits the front part of that white line, that's a touchdown. And then the two-point play. Clever little play and a good call for the two points. Definitely in on that one. Bob Davies celebrates the two-point conversion. He made a key call to go for it on fourth down. He's back in the game. 21-18 as Casey Clawson surveys the Notre Dame defense and the clock just under eight minutes. The ball at the Tennessee 24. Clawson rolls, looking to throw. And it is incomplete yeah. and a flag down intended for Witten. And Earl got there a little early and draws the penalty for interference. You know, if the ball had been thrown on time and Earl was expected to be thrown on time, that would have been a good defensive play. But uh, Clawson kind of held on to it. Pass interference on the defense, penalizes the spot of the foul. First down. Bottom of the screen down here. Here's the tight end. See the, yeah, the easy call, good call. But have been thrown a little bit quicker as he was expecting. It might have been a nice uh, defensive play. There's old Smokey. Smokey 8. Uh, that's a national championship, Smokey. The only national champion, Smokey. I'm talking about the real one. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about the one on the right. First down from the 32-yard line. Boston handing to Stevens. Turns the corner. Upended at the 40-yard line. Earl just saved the Stevens touchdown run there. And Casey Clausen's had a big second half. Only 64 yards passing in the first half. Came alive after, you know, he had an interception for a touchdown. And he really came back and threw the ball accurately and with touch. And 
that last time handing off to Stevens, who's now carried 18 times for 58 yards and a touchdown. As the Volunteers look to eat up a little time with a long drive if they can do it. And that's what they've been very good at doing this year in this fourth quarter. Stevens again. <laughs> Hit at the line of scrimmage that time. He only needed less than a yard for a first down, and I don't believe he got it. You know, Courtney Watson giving him a Tommy Lasorda bear hug there. <laughs> take a long look at it and it will be just short. Courtney Watson, the man that uh, hit Stevens immediately. Will Fulmer and the Tennessee Volunteers trying to stay alive in the bowl championship series picture. Third down in less than a yard. Three tight end formation. Fleming the fullback, Stevens the tailback. Whitten in motion. Stevens hit, but he didn't need much. Yeah, but you said he hit and he just kept going. That's twice on, you know, third down runs that he's really kept his legs going. I think he picked up a first down again. And they're going to measure it again. But you, know, you, you look at Travis Stevens, Tom. He's 5'9", 190. And he did get it. And you think, hey, this is a guy that can only run outside, bounce it outside. But as we've seen here today, this guy is very good on short yardage plays. You know, he's good on first, second, and third down. Three times, or excuse me, four times this year, he's carried over 30 times. And as you said, Clawson finding his rhythm, mm -hmm. rhythm and getting a, a chance to have the football, too, in the second half. Tennessee first down. Stevens got a good block from Whitten. Yeah. Flag is down. It might have been a little too good. Yeah, they're gonna, I think they're going to call a, a hold on Witten. Uh, initially, he did have good angle on the guy, but I think he used a hand or two. It's amazing when that happens right in front of the Notre Dame bench, how many <laughs> officials spring <laughs> <laughs> start calling the holding. And watch number, number one right here in the corner. Got him on the left, left hand. Yep, yep. There's the, the hole. Grabbing his jersey and uh, the walk off against the Volunteers. And that's uh, Bob Davy and Glenn Earl. Yeah, yeah, be careful of the 15 yard penalty. And here's what Casey Clawson needs to be careful. You know, his team is up by three points. It's first and 21. They had some success running the bubble screen earlier in a long down situation like this. Shovel pass. Wow. Notre Dame was ready for that one. That'll be a further loss in the play. Stevens on the receiving end. But Courtney or Anthony Weaver was right there. He was on the receiving well, the Irish, end too. Yeah, yeah, he just about got the, uh, the pass. A Anthony Weaver is a guy that's done everything for the Irish. 11 tackles for loss. That's his 12th of the year, number 98. Three sacks on the year, forced to fumble, tips and passes. And he said to us yesterday, the first thing I think about is getting my hands outstretched on that offensive tackle and throwing them to the side. Just what he did there. Weaver, the son of a former Army first sergeant for 21 years. Grew up in Saratoga Springs, New York. From the shotgun, Clawson in trouble. Finally got rid of it, complete. But a good open field tackle made by Shane Walton as Stevens caught it in the flat. Steve Walton is a good open field tackle. And Travis Stevens is a pretty slippery guy. And a 62-yard screen pass for a touchdown against Georgia a few weeks ago. But in the open field, locked him up, just was not going to let go. Got a little bit of help from his friends. But you know, those friends run with wide receivers and tackle guys like Stevens in the backfield. Here's a huge play now, third down and 26. Yeah, particularly considering Tennessee has not punted the ball well, Tom. Clawson retreats to the shotgun formation. He's got four wide receivers. Notre Dame is showing a blitz and looked like movement. Tennessee, it'll be another five yards assess the Volunteers. It looked like Fred Weary, the left guard, was signaling for Clawson to come up and you know, get underneath the center. Maybe he couldn't hear. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. So it was delay of game, the call, as Clawson had trouble getting everybody set. 
And now it's third down and 31. Ball's almost back to the 20 yard line. Third and 21, Clawson. Shotgun. Casey Clawson. And he'll be stopped. Weaver had dead aim on him all the way. Hey, don't you want to stay in bounds in that situation? Yeah, you do. Let the yeah. clock go. You know, he, he maybe cost his team 20, 25 seconds there when they're trying to grind out that last 335. The Anthony Weaver gets those hands out, tosses the guy, always hustling. Yeah, you know, and good things happen when you hustle like that, and they have this year for Anthony Weaver. For the first time today, Justin Colquitt will punt for Tennessee. The freshman's first punt. Booms downfield to Vontez Duff. Fumbles the ball. Picked it up. Duff, there's a flag down. And his knee must have gone mm -hmm. down as well. 44 yards on Colquitt's first punt. Well, did he wait for a fair catch? I, I couldn't tell whether he waited for a fair catch or his knee was down. They'll sort it out for us. Duff saying, I didn't signal for a fair catch. Mm -hmm. We're still waiting for an explanation of the call. And might have gone up for a fair catch. Some consensus has been reached. Dead ball delay on the receiving team. It was an illegal fair catch signal given. Therefore, we could not run. It'll be a five-yard penalty, first down. Well, it's illegal field call decision. I don't know. I've never seen that, but it's, I don't. That was not a fair catch signal. Wow. Yeah. I didn't, that was not a fair catch signal. I'm sorry. Looks like he's just kind of maneuvering his body around here to catch the catch the ball. Wow, that's a tough call. And see, the, the official there, you know, he, he called it awfully late, too. Tough call goes against the Irish that time. They'll have 325 on the clock when we come back. Back at Notre Dame as we take a look at our Siebel Systems game summary. Defense scoring a touchdown on a turnover today. Casey Clawson over 200 yards passing. One touchdown and the interception return for the score. And with three minutes, 25 seconds left, we have a three-point game. Notre Dame with the football down three. They start from their own 25-yard line. Holiday, play action fake. Wants to throw a screen pass and he's sacked. Back at the six-yard line by Moore, Eddie Moore. Well, sometimes Moore is less, but not in this case. I mean, Eddie Moore off the corner. Very good blitz. Remember, we talked to coaches uh, this week about the way he blitzes. First, you know, just kind of staying at home. But had a very good game of blitzing against South Carolina a week ago. Caused a fumble and recovered one. Looked like they wanted to throw a screen. Yeah. And now Notre Dame has a second down and 19. Holiday has protection. Pass batted and intercepted. Deflected at the line of scrimmage and intercepted by Tennessee. Dominique Stevenson comes up with the interception. Somebody tipped it. Somebody kept it alive. And then Stevenson ended up with the ball. So three different volunteers had a piece of that. He has 92 here. No. Oh, John Steven, oh, John Hender Henderson, yeah, number 98. Henderson deflected yep. it, and then the Hainsworth kept it alive. Right, he, uh, trying to catch it, but <laughs> was number 92, he hadn't caught a ball in a while, a while like that. <laughs> and then Stevenson latches on to it. So a huge turnover, and with 2.41 on the clock, Tennessee takes over at the Irish 25. Fawson looking for six right away. Throws, and it's incomplete. 
intended for Washington, double covered, and Walton knocked it away. But Tom, what an aggressive call. I mean, you, you, if they, if Tennessee picks their spots really to be aggressive, really up by three points. They go right down on first down after the turnover and go for, for the, you know, really the play to put it away. I mean, I love the call. Lynn Earl coming over to help out Walton. Once again, Shane Walton makes a good play. Second and ten. Pitch it to Stevens. One on one with a corner. He takes him down at the 25 yard line. Sap. Okay, Casey Clawson again needs to know the situation, right? It's uh, they're up by three points, 228 remaining. You just you don't want to sack. I mean, three points forces Notre Dame to score a touchdown to beat you. So, you know, you, 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 you put through these kind of things all week. You're thinking about these things. Your coaches are telling about them. You've got to execute them. Timeout, Irish. 228 left. Twilight at Notre Dame Stadium, the seventh-ranked Volunteers of Tennessee against Notre Dame, a hard-fought game throughout. Each defense scoring a touchdown. A big turnover. Notre Dame getting a pass tipped at the line of scrimmage, intercepted by Tennessee. Now the Volunteers will have it. Third down and nine from the Irish 24-yard line with two minutes, 28 seconds to play. Tennessee trying to stay in the BCS picture. Start of the national championship. They've lost only once, five and one. Bob Davey. And the Irish trying to make a point by taking on the nation's seventh-ranked team, perhaps helping Davey try to save his job. Here it is, third down and nine. Clawson rolls. He's got a lot of room to run. Sends it complete. Pass caught by Parker, who was wide open, and he has a first and goal at the five-yard line. Another aggressive play call by Randy Sanders. Again, you know, I'm thinking, hey, just kind of kick the field goal, force them to, to go to the touchdown. And, 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 and it was a rollout. I mean, he hasn't really, he's not terribly nimble on his feet, but you see wide, how wide open the receiver Parker is. So good call, great ex ex execution by Clawson. Kind of a punt there. Like a little wobbly there Wasn't but pretty, but it got, yeah. got the yeah. job done. A 20-yard gain, first and goal, Tennessee. And changes the play. It'll be Stevens. Travis Stevens plowing his way to about the two. And they used the last time out. That's Notre Dame's last. Comes with two minutes and ten seconds left. Well, Bob Davey had his Irish ready to play today, but one wonders if they should lose to the Volunteers today. His job still very much in jeopardy. Well, yeah, Tom, you, you know, the, the lack of, you know, certain public support from anybody here on the Notre Dame campus uh, from the administration has been obvious. I mean, I and there's a sense of resignation, I think, about Bob. You know, we went and talked to him every week. He knows what the, the status is. Almost every head coach at some point or, or another is going to get fired. And uh, I just think this schedule is too difficult, along with her admissions requirements, win national championships, which is, which is what they want. So they want their cake and need it too with, with the admissions requirements they have, the schedule they play. I don't think they can win a national championship. Well, certainly this season has been a nightmare for Bob Davey as they opened 0-3. Then they won three straight games and had a chance for a good finish, but that all came crashing down with a loss at Boston College a week ago. They give Tennessee a battle today, but if Tennessee punches it in here, looks like the Irish will once again be on the losing side of the score, and the calls for Davies' ouster will intensify. Stevens dives and did not get in. But, you know, if in fact that is the case, the next coach has the same issues, I believe. So you're saying that the, the Notre Dame administration will ultimately have to make a decision on which direction they want to go. Well, you know, they, they got the uh, NCAA award for the highest uh, graduation rate, which is a wonderful thing. It is. But some of those, uh, you need some other, I think, kinds of kids that can make big, dramatic plays, which they don't have a lot of those guys in the roster. Third and goal from the one-yard line. Clock ticking toward 90 seconds. 
Stevens stops at the line of scrimmage. And Notre Dame is still alive if they can force a field goal to Lifford Jefferson, number 15, celebrates his hit. Casey Flossen ought to be using every second of the 25 second clock as well. He may, he may wait to uh, and call a timeout perhaps after he gets down to 24. And maybe Tennessee doesn't want to risk trying yeah. to kick a field goal and have it blocked in return. Clawson is going to, he's over here, he's going to wait for the, the, the second clock, which is the 25 second clock, which is now at 13. He's just going to wait for that to go down. It's 10 seconds now. As soon as he gets down to about two, he'll call timeout. There it is. Almost missed it. <laughs> Got it down to one. Well, I think he'd warn the official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so 21-18, 44 seconds left. Bill Fulmer and the uh, Volunteer Brain Trust discussing the strategy here. And while we have the timeout, let's go to our Chevrolet players of the game, Casey Clawson of the Volunteers and David Gibbons from Notre Dame. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, a tradition for over 30 years. I, I have an honorable mention, folks. Julian Battle, number 14, the strong yeah, safety. He, yeah. he made big plays, didn't yeah, he? Absolutely. He caused a fumble by Arnez Battle yeah. on the one-yard line and then caused another fumble of Ryan Grant and returned it 81 yards for a touchdown. Yeah, he, had, he and Rashad Baker, the other safety, I want to say that SEC, you had to play the, the pass awfully well, but boy, these guys are, are awfully good tacklers as well. Now let's see what Tennessee's decision will be regarding the play call. Will they go for the field goal or will they try it? They will not go for the field goal. They're going to go for it fourth down and goal from the two yard line with 44 seconds remaining. It's the right call. It's the right thing to do here. Lawson still has the ball, and he dives into the end zone for a touchdown. Yeah, I really like the way Randy Sanders calls the game. Right there. He has absolutely mixed it up. Being aggressive when he has to, subtle little play there. And again, no, nobody, I think, in Notre Dame is expecting Casey Clawson to run this ball in because, as you can see, he looks like... The old octopus falling out of the tree. Not terribly nimble, quick on his feet, but got the ball in the end zone. So turnovers have been huge in this game as Walls will attempt the extra point. And it's good. Arnez Battle of Notre Dame fumbling on the Tennessee one-yard line. Then Julian Battle caused the fumble from Ryan Grant, returned to 81 yards for the Tennessee touchdown, and now Clawson scores after the interception of Carlisle Holiday on the Irish 25-yard line. Two, Tennessee scores the result of Notre Dame turnovers. And, of course, you'll want to stay with us because coming up we'll have a real treat for you as Michael Jordan and the NBA return to NBC. Michael making his home debut in a Washington Wizards uniform coming up next as they face the defending Eastern Conference champion Philadelphia 76ers, Michael Jordan and the Wizards following Casey and the Vols. Well, Tennessee got a tough battle from the Irish today. Yep. Uh, but, but you know what, Bill Fulmer, at, at the end of the day, he kind of developed a true to form for him. You know, his defense played really well. and When they needed to, they kind of mashed the ball on him a little bit. Stevens kind of came on later in the ball game. There's that dramatic uh, demarcation there. The ball fans in the orange and the uh, Notre Dame fans in the green. Tennessee, like virtue of the Dame. turnovers, converting the turnovers into points, the mark of a good team. And Absolutely. now Fulmer's balls face Memphis, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, and that big regular season closer against the Florida Gators. And that's at the swamp, too, isn't it? That's at the swamp. Swampy that time of year, though, it's, <laughs> I don't think it is in September. It shouldn't be too bad. Yeah. That should be some game. Julius Jones awaiting the kick by Walls. And here is Jones. 
Caught from behind and taken down at the 25-yard line with 29 seconds on the clock. 16-yard return. Bob Davey has a week and then closes the home schedule against Navy and then goes on the road mm. to face two yeah. ranked teams, Stanford and Purdue. Stanford may well be the best team in the Pac-10. They play Washington today, but Stanford is scoring a lot of points against some very good teams. So it, it didn't get a lot easier. Well, they'll only be favored in one of their last yeah. three. And they'll be big favorites over Navy, but if the Irish wind up four and seven, it might be tough for Davey to retain his job, despite the fact that his contract was extended at the end of last season. Here's a step off against the Volunteers. Face mask, 15 yards. Nine seconds. Carlisle Holiday being chased and unloads it. Was he outside the tackle box? Yes, indeed. Yes. That will not be a grounding. So, Coach Fulmer and the Volunteers, they will be favored in all except their final game. Memphis, Kentucky, and Vanderbilt, they'll be big favorites over them. And then that date at the Swamp, December 1st, the game postponed from I earlier mean, in the season. On the offense, the ball did not get back to the line of scrimmage. The quarterback was outside of the box. It did not get back to the line. Therefore, it'll be lost to down at the spot of the foul. And, you know, the nice thing, I think, is for Casey Frost and for Phil Fulmer, is this team is beginning to get a little bit healthier, certainly in the wide receiving core. You know, uh, Kelly Washington practiced for the first time in three weeks. Uh, Dante Stallworth is back. Henderson gets a... Uh, it is coming on. Although so they did have some people banged yeah. up today, but they'll have uh, a chance to get them healthy again before they meet the Gators. They will be big favorites in the next three games. Kennedy yeah. against Notre Dame, I think. Henderson, Sachs, Holiday. Somebody from Notre Dame moved a little early on that play. So this is a you know an interesting team I think Tennessee because they can power football you to death and then they can you know they have some big play capability with those wide illegal motion on the offense that penalty is declined the third and you know maybe best of all they can play defense absolutely the, the, the one weak spot or soft, soft spot thus far this year has been their punting yeah. Hunter makes. The catch nope. at the nope, no catch. Now they say incomplete. Crafted at the 35-yard line. Well, we saw that uh, Notre Dame was the team of October. We during that month, mm. as Coach Fulmer mm. gets a little shower. Mm. <laughs> Lucky it's 60 degrees out. And his balls <laughs> are a team of November. They haven't lost since '99 in the month of November. 61 and three, a staggering record in the month of November. Now. We do have to say there's a lot of Memphis, Kentucky, and Vanderbilt in that <laughs> You're a Kentucky grad, I know. <laughs> Hard for you to say that. Holiday deflected and incomplete. Burnett got a hand on that one, and now the Rocky Top celebration can begin. A tough game for the Volunteers, but they pull it out. Homer and Davey exchange the midfield handshake. And uh, the hundreds of Tennessee fans who made the trip up to South Bend are rewarded with a 28 to 18 victory as the seventh ranked volunteers go to six and one. Back with final comments in a moment. 